Heavenly Father, ruler of land and sky above, we pray this day for deliverance from evil. Grant us the meager sustenance to nourish our fragile bodies in the times to come. Guide our lost souls on the path to salvation. Shine down your radiant light upon us, for darkness looms thick through all corners of Fevrith. Such is my request as your humble servant. In the name of the Guardian Unicorn, and that of the Holy Mother, is that you, Elaine? How many times must I ask you not to stomp around in the cathedral? <sighs> what is the meaning of this? Well, look what we've got here. Seems we're the first to show. Rough her up if you want, but don't forget. The girl dies, and our heads will roll too. Such depravity will not go unpunished. Not in the house of the Heavenly Father! Yeah? Then you best get to praying! Yeah. <laughs> She's fast! Not as fast as us! <laughs> what the? <laughs> Scarlet! Are you hurt? Only a little shaken, that's all. What's happening to us, Elaine? A ship has come ashore on Palavian soil. One hoisting the banner of the Zenoiran army. And are they aware that you're the Crown Prince? I can't say for certain, but we know one thing. These people are our enemy, and they must be stopped. Yes. My cathedral will see no more bloodshed this day. Come, let's move outside. Your Highness, it's a relief to see you unharmed. Hold on. Where's Lex? He went ahead to alert the town. We best find him and get to the harbor. Indeed. But first, my prince, this belongs to you. A ring. The Ring of the Unicorn. Queen Elenia wished for you to have it. In truth, I had intended to wait till signs of age played more deeply cross your face. But we no longer have such luxury. I have the utmost faith you'll see it secured. A keepsake from my mother. Thank you for this, Joseph. Truly. Make no further mention of it. Now, let us be off. A word, Elaine? Is something wrong? Well... No, it's nothing. Are you sure? Anxiety will be the death of you if you keep it bottled up like that. It really isn't important, I assure you. It's just... Our lives have changed so drastically from the peace we had only yesterday. It barely seems real. I can't say I feel any different. But I've always known this day would come. It's why I've spent all these years training under Joseph's careful instruction. A shame you never had the chance to meet my mother. She was always one to blaze a path forward, royal blade in arm. But as her heir, I intend to lead in much the same way. Is that why you and Lex spend all your days banging swords down at the shore? You've seen that, have you? You know, Hodric was likely but one of many. And assuming the others who surrendered to Zenoira are being controlled as he was, we may just stand a chance in this. Yet our liberation is still in its nascent days. Promising, yes, but gravely fragile as well. Which is precisely why I'll need your help, Scarlet. To reclaim peace for all who have suffered. Elaine, I... Of course. I'll do everything I can as is my role as a priestess of the Palavian Church. Hey, don't forget about me! <sighs> Lex... <laughs> what? I'm sorry, my prince. Decorum doesn't come naturally to this fool. It's alright. 
When you've known each other as long as we have, there's no reason to let formality bind us. But there are protocols to observe. Rules we must follow as vassals in service of the Crown. Still, I'm of the same mind. What mind he has, that is. I'll give my all in the royal name, Your Majesty. Thank you all. I couldn't ask for a finer group of friends. Elaine? Why have you stopped? We're surrounded. Not the welcome party I was hoping for. Get your vile claws off of me! Let her go! I should have known you'd be behind this treachery, Renaud. What is the meaning of this? Apologies for the icy reception, but we've business with the girl. What business could you have with Scarlet? Unhand her this instant. No, I don't think that will be happening. I act under orders from Emperor Galerius himself. As for what he plans to do with her, that's not for one of my station to know. Yet I shall see it done all the same. <laughs> Scarlet! So, the foal has finally ceased braying, hmm? What are you planning to do with me? I should think you'd already know. I have no intention of helping you, if that's what you imply. Your intentions matter not. Though I must say, it came as quite the surprise to hear Hodric had set off for your derelict island. Emperor Galerius has tendered a fine reward for you, and I'll not allow it to be snatched from beneath me. I haven't an inkling how he persuaded you to follow him, but his aims are scarce different than mine own. I'd advise you against harboring any false hopes of rescue, girl. My hopes are true as the morning sun. They'll come. Yes, yes. A commendable show of defiance. But our mercenaries will have made short work of your friends. Worry not. You'll be freed from your burdens ere long. Once you've fulfilled your purpose, that is. In the meantime, do behave yourself, would you? I've brought the girl, my liege. And I a moment too soon. The sanctuary and its accursed seal await. Then the hour is upon us? Whatever treachery you're planning, I won't be a part of it. Mind your tongue if you wish to keep it, child. You stand before the glorious emperor of all of Feverith. Pay her no mind. She'll greet death's cold embrace soon enough. Then allow me the honor of introducing them when that time comes. <laughs> so be it. Lord Renault, I bring urgent word. Speak. It's the rebels, my lord. They gather at our gates this very instant. Seems our cell swords weren't quite as indomitable as they claimed. You're dismissed. My business at the sanctuary will demand time. See to it that I'm not interrupted. Yes, my liege. Not a single rebel shall be spared my spear. Please be safe, Elaine. Elaine. Is it wise for you to be out of bed? I'm all right. I, um, thank you, Elaine, for everything. Twas nothing. All I ask in return is that you rest if you need it. The last few days have felt like countless moons. I already told you I'm okay. It's just, I heard everything. 
Back at the sanctuary, faintly and through a fog of pain, but still clear enough. Galerius spoke true. Pontifex Arant is my father. I'm sorry for keeping it hidden. If anyone deserves to know, it's you. I only hope you can forgive me. There is not to forgive. Should knowledge of your birth be made public, it would only invite danger. You were not wrong to hide it. Beside which, I'm certain your father delivered you from Albion praying for your well-being above all else. Just as my own mother did with me. I appreciate that. If anything, that does answer a lingering question or two. From the day we first met, you were always... Always what? Complaining about how untidy the lodgings were or how ill-equipped the cathedral was. As if such a thing is my fault. My home in Albion was a grand estate staffed with dozens of servants, and our cathedral the greatest architectural marvel. All that besides, I was but a child when I was secreted away to Palavia. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's good to see you've recovered enough to put up a fair fight. I'd hardly call it fair. In all seriousness, though, I don't wish to put you in harm's way any more than I already have. I'm the one who invited that danger by keeping my birth hidden from you. And Galerius made it clear enough. I've served my usefulness to them. I doubt he and his cohorts will spare another thought on me. What I mean to say is, you needn't worry for my safety. I'm staying with you. And I'll more than earn my keep. And here I thought you were a second away from ordering a meal at Death's Tavern. That kind of fire, though, and you'll be the one doing the cooking. I'd rather you didn't tease me, thank you. Apologies for interrupting this tender moment, Your Highness, but I come bearing news. Princess Virginia has been sighted in the land of Drakenhold. I'm sorry, who? Niece to the departed Queen Elenia, and elder cousin of our very prince here. She had been lost to us a great many years. That is, of course, until now. It would seem she's taken refuge in the Dominion of the Dragons. Now, I'm certain your focus lies on the revelation you bore at the Sanctuary, and I cannot fault you for such. Yet, assuming these reports hold true, it would be unseemly of us to abandon the Princess when she needs us most. Pray, consider redirecting your advance. It's just as Aubin said. We should have no trouble passing safely. And we finally have a clean source of water. This oasis is a godsend amidst all this sand. Hey, he's back. What news do you bring? All sorted. We're fine long as we're here. Meaning we're not fine everywhere else. Sorry to say it after all the hot air I talked, but... Yep. Turns out we got a problem. How so? Well, you know how I said I got an in here? An old bandit pal of mine by the name of Magellan. The guy practically runs the place. And he does it well. At least he did. Rumor has it, he's a whole different man now. Don't know what happened to him, but he's been picking fights with other gangs for the past six months. That sounds awfully familiar. Can't say for sure, but Zenoira probably got to him. Is there no way to avoid conflict? Not if I can't work something out. Anyone steps foot on his land and they're as good as buried. But I'm not stopping till I know what happened to him. Why he's doing this? Mind making a little detour to his keep? The choice is yours, as long as you're the one charting the course. And if Magellan is under Zenoira's control, we may just be able to loosen the spell. There. 
poor woman. It would seem she was cut down from behind. Uh, how can this be? Oh, Rainice. You know her. She was once my lady in waiting, yes. Stand back. I think I can heal her wounds. Lady Scarlet, I thank the Father above for your safety. You've grown much since last we met. Before me stands not the child I remember, but a full-blooded soldier of the Liberation. This isn't exactly how I imagined our reunion, but I'm glad you're all right, Rhaenys. And still as stunning as ever, I see. What have you been doing these days? Fighting back. I string my bow for a small resistance movement backed by almost every last of Albion's lords. The nobility has not bent the knee to Zenoira? They maintain deference outwardly, all while funding our revolt from behind the curtain of anonymity. As a result, the territories that fall outside the Church's purview are locked in fierce civil war. And how did you come to be knocked out on the ground here? I was sent as a messenger to request aid for the Resistance. But I was soon discovered by a band of Zenorians who turned their blades upon me and struck. My wounds ran deep, yet I was able to escape until... Well, you know what happened next. Rhaenys, was it? Zenoira is our enemy as much as they are yours. We will purge them from this holy land and see Albion restored. As I should have expected, word of your noble actions has long reached our ears, Prince Elaine. Allow me to lend my aptitude to the effort. It's barely been ten minutes since you were rapping on the Father's door, begging him to welcome you. You need rest, and you're not fighting anyone until you get it. Of course, Lady Scarlet. How fair your wounds? Entirely healed, thanks to your magic. And what of your allies? Still sheltered in the Abbey to the south? Uh, how did you...? We heard from one of the Zenoirans we took captive. It seems they've dispatched a squadron to the Abbey's location. We have to hurry. Indeed. And this time, my arrows shall support your march. Let us be off. up ahead, yes? It is. They've offered far beyond their means in treatment and lodging for our wounded soldiers. And now it's only a matter of time before Zenoira's squadron arrives. Then we'll just have to prepare the warmest of welcomes for them. A word, Lady Scarlet? My people are safe once more, due almost wholly to the benevolence of the Liberation Army. The proper thanks eludes me. Um, Rhaenys? In what felt like a mere moment, you've become a fine young woman. Do you remember the day I left Albion? Back then, I didn't understand the point of it all. I cried and cried, begging to stay until my voice went hoarse. And I remember you cried with me that day. I've spent many an idle evening since. Lamenting my decision to remain behind. With only my thoughts to keep me company, I could but imagine how frightened you must have been. How alone. I was both, at times. But my years on the island made me tougher than I could have ever expected. Indeed they did. The woman before me now is nothing like the sobbing girl I remember. <laughs> You miss some of my finest hours, I'll have you know. Yes, I'm painfully aware. But I refuse to miss another. My place is at your side and nowhere else. I only hope Prince Elaine sees it the same way. I suppose I'll know soon enough when I ask to join the Liberation in true. Don't they need you here? Perhaps, but we're all of the same mind. We do whatever is necessary to aid the Liberation. Then come. I'm sure Elaine will be thrilled to hear the news. I 
I'd know that voice anywhere. Uh, it's really you! Humorous! I thought my eyes deceived me. It's been so long. A friend of yours? In days past, yes. We were inseparable as children. And you must be Prince Elaine, I presume? You know of him? Everyone has heard stories of the Liberation Army. I take it you stand with them as well, Scarlet? Proud rebel at your service. And I see you've become a knight, just as you always dreamed. It was the only thing I could think about as a child. Those were simpler times. Happier ones. We would play in the garden until the sun went down. Our only company, the resident insects. Right, the garden. I was just talking about it. Is it still there? Indeed, and it's recently welcomed the most beautiful bloom you'll ever see. We could go back if you'd like. Relive our youth for just a moment. That would be wonderful. I'd love to show you too, Elaine. Let's all go together. just as beautiful as I remember it. And such an incredible smell, too. It's stunning, yes. We never had blossoms like these back on Palavia. We used to sit right here, braiding little crowns and necklaces out of different colored flowers. Do you remember, Humorous? You'd press and dry them for us, then... Don't move. Explain yourself. I won't ask twice. Relinquish Scarlet to me, or else. Humorous. Come. It's not safe here. Returned empty-handed, have you? It would seem your heart's just not in this little agreement of ours. A shame. But it is what it is. Consider my promise revoked. Wait, I beg you! It's just as we thought. Scarlet stands with the rebel forces. But if we surround their limited ranks with both our armies, we should have little trouble in reclaiming her. You presume to ask us to partake as well? Please, my lord. This final chance is all I request. <laughs> as you wish. The girl will be ours one way or another. We can settle our agreement once she is. Just know you'll get no further kindness if you fail us now. She won't elude our grasp again. With me, men. We make for our post at once. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, have you asked to meet me here? I could raise my sword at any moment, you know. I am aware. But I understand why you did it. And I know you have no reason to attack me. Not anymore. It doesn't matter. I'll never deserve your trust again. Tell me, Humorous. Do you remember this? I can't believe you're still holding on to that. Why wouldn't I be? These flowers you pressed bring me straight back to the day I left Albion. You gave them to me as a symbol of our friendship. And asked me never to forget about you. It was all I could do to get you to stop crying. Yes. And it didn't work. Your shoulder was practically drenched with tears. And a bit of snot as well. That was a long time ago. Even still, whenever I felt lonely, I'd look at these flowers, and it was like you were right there next to me. I have been blessed with a great many companions since that day, but I have never once considered getting rid of them. No matter how far apart we may be, you'll always be a dear friend, Humorous. Scarlet, I... <sighs> Come with us. Please. How can you say that after what I've done? 
I tried to betray you, to hand you off to Zenaira. Perhaps, but that's all in the past now. So come. We've shed enough tears in this garden to last us a lifetime. An impressive show of strength, Sir Elaine. Tell me, Fodokia, why did you lie to us? Your people surely seek respite from the suffering of Zenoiran rule. You have the wrong of it. When the Empire came forth and began violating our land, I fought back with every ounce of my being. I was prepared to oppose their rule until our final soldier fell. As were my people. They stood by me and risked their very lives in defending this sacred ground. But six months passed, and then a year. The pain of a citizenry besieged grew fiercer and fiercer, until at last there came the breaking point. On that day, my own subjects kidnapped my son and demanded we lay down our arms. That's horrible. Yet it only worsened from there. By Zenoiran orders, they massacred my child <sighs> and offered his corpse as a sacrifice to our new masters. Barbarians! I was well prepared to follow him beyond the Veil of Death, but Zenoira had no interest in executing me. They chose to leave me in power, to exploit my rage and my despair for their own nefarious purposes. So, I bent to the will of my people, and the path they chose to walk was that of subjugation. Lord Fodokia. You might not realize this, but we've met before. Years ago, when I was just a young girl. Your son and I were quite close, in fact. As for you, I remember a man of great integrity, great warmth. And though we were too young to understand much of it, you spoke often of the true makings of a lord, of the love such a role requires. Yes, I recognize you now. You have grown so much since I saw you last. <coughs> the time has finally come to see my son once again. Not while you can still honor his memory, if you would, Scarlet. According to the captives, all decisions regarding the deployment of soldiers come directly from the Pontifex himself. Yet, Galerius claimed the man was dead. The Pontificate is a hereditary station, meaning the next in line takes the mitre when their forebear passes. Thus, we can almost assuredly assume an heir has ascended to the role. I don't believe that's likely. Then perhaps Galerius was lying. Such simple deception is far from beneath him. Hey, uh, not to butt in, but... Isn't Scarlet supposed to be the new Pontifex? <gasps> Why would you think such a thing? Well, the two of you have been acting real weird ever since we got to Albion. I was gonna come ask why when I overheard you talking about it. Sorry. I wasn't trying to pry. Does he speak true? He does. I'm sorry for hiding it from you all. Pontifex Arant only has one descendant, and that's me. How long have you known, Elaine? Since the Sanctuary in Cornea. In the eyes of the Orthodoxy, Scarlet would rightfully take over in the case of Arant's passing. Which means Galerius did lie. It appears the Pontifex still lives, and is dictating every move Albion's forces make. It's possible, yes. 
But our only hope of learning the truth will lie in infiltrating the pontifical chambers. Then let me do it. Not when Zenoira has got the church dancing to their tune. It's too risky. Maybe so. But I'm his daughter. And I won't let you stop me from seeing what's become of him. It's true that we'd be spared a sacrilegious war were you able to convince him to stand down. Yet we must first determine if he even lives. I know how you feel, Scarlet, but such responsibility can't rest on your shoulders. If Arant truly has passed on, yours would surely be the next life they hope to claim. So, even a proper scouting mission has failed to uncover the truth. Indeed, it seems the Basilica's security was far too tight to breach. Though we have recovered word from a few locals who claim they've seen Arant at a distance. And yet, he's made no public appearances of late, citing grave illness as the reason. Whether or not he truly lives, there will be no avoiding conflict with the arm of the Orthodoxy loyal to Zenoira. If I may, Your Highness, I suggest we advance on the Basilica with all haste. Before they can rally reinforcements from the rest of Albion, you mean? Hmm. I suppose that would forestall an all-out war. Quite so. And should we manage to bend the trunk of the Orthodoxy toward our cause, its many branches will surely follow suit. You okay with this, Scarlet? I've made my peace with whatever it is we have to do. <sighs> so don't treat me any differently, okay? That goes for you too, Elaine. That's easy enough to say, but this fight will surely see you cross swords with people you know. Maybe even people you love. I imagine the battle will be a painful one indeed. What's one moment of pain in the face of a lifetime of suffering under Zenoiran rule? For the people of Albion, I'll do anything it takes. Very well then. Our destination is set. We march for Albion's capital, and Bisphane Basilica held within. In that case, we must first secure the bridgehead across the river in the Warnby region. Prepare to depart at once. But of course, Your Highness. A moment, Scarlet. Are you sure you want to go through with this? To be honest, I'm a bit scared. I can only imagine. But praying over the matter will solve nothing. I have to act if I want to see it done. And I plan to do just that. So, you're the one commanding these rebels. Come forth and claim my head, if you dare. I assure you, it won't be an easy task. That's enough, Nigel. Lay down your arms. You know him, Scarlet? What did you call her? This is the man who delivered me to Palavia as a child. Him and a trusted few servants, that is. Then it's truly you. But what are you doing consorting with insurgents? Do you remember the words my father left me with all those years ago? I relayed the message myself, yes. It was regarding your sacred mission, to serve as guide and guardian for the savior who would one day greet Palavia's shores. Savior? What is he talking about? Wait! You mean to say the man before me... ...is the same one that my father foresaw. Yes. But it's not out of duty to my lineage that I fight for the liberation. I've joined his cause of my own free will, and I'll do anything in my power to help him see it through. Then you would see our savior turn his blade on the very orthodoxy you claim to represent. I have no quarrel with the Church or its teachings. Yet despite their claims of neutrality, 
his devout feet filling Zenoiran boots. Indeed, as ordained by the divine words of His Holiness, Pontifex Arant. Galerius told us the Pontifex is dead. Blasphemy! I'll not suffer this impious slander! Then answer me this instead. Why is the Church's army after Scarlet? They're... what? Surely one of the Orthodoxy's own knights should know what holy orders are being pursued. Or what machinations are underway inside the Basilica's walls. Another moment here and you'll be surrounded by your alleged allies. Go. Learn the truth for yourself. Our scouts have confirmed my trepidation. Reclaiming the Basilica will be a challenge unlike any we faced yet. Indeed. Tis between a mountain rise too treacherous for even our most skilled aerial knights, or a narrow road quite easily ambushed. Truly a natural fortress, in every sense of the phrase. Your Majesty! What is it, Chloe? It's not like you to be so panicked. Well, it's just... a knight of the Orthodoxy has shown up at our camp, sir. Alone. A feeling it would be you, Nigel. The state of our orthodoxy was just as you said. Zenoira has fashioned us into mere pawns in their fiendish chess game. And Pontifex Arant. Twas all artifice. His holiness has long since passed, yet now stands animated in death by the most abhorrent of necromancers. No. I'm so sorry, Scarlet. Then Baltro has sunk his talons into the sacred flesh of the Church itself. What do you intend to do now? Make Zenoira suffer for their foul defilement of our most holy patriarch. Could you not have made public with the truth first? The clergy would surely take notice to such godlessness. Yet here you stand, a solitary knight. I come to you an escaped heretic, so marked for the crime of claiming the Pontifex deceased. It would seem Father Senatio and the Church hierarchy beneath him all sing from Zenoira's hymnal. I know that name, but I'm not sure a pious angel like him could be capable of such a thing. Sir Nigel, does your presence here mean you seek to join our cause? Do not mistake my aims. His Holiness has ventured forth into the great beyond, and Lady Scarlet is the rightful successor to his radiant office. My only wish is to see her granted that role in earnest, and the orthodoxy restored to its proper standing. Then we're in alignment. We would welcome your presence among our ranks, even if only until we reach the Basilica. So too has my divine calling. The truth of His Holiness's demise will come to light, and all of his teachings shall be lost like so many feathers on a foul wind. You dare speak his name after the desecration you've engaged in? I had little choice. Absent a pontifex at its helm, the orthodoxy would fail to adequately direct the faith of its believers. Trust in our creed would wither and fade, so I resorted to desperate measures, at least until we could find Lady Scarlet. Why did you hide it from me? It is as I've mentioned before. His Holiness forbade us from even speaking her name. It's really you. The woman you've sought for so long now stands in your presence. Lady Scarlet, but how have you come to arrive here? And among the ranks of rebels, no less. You would know all that and more had you only spoken to me, Senatio. It was I who ushered her out of this land, 
at His Holiness's behest. <sighs> then perhaps my greatest sin was confiding in that Zenoiran sorcerer over my own countrymen. Even so, I am glad to have reached this conclusion. I'd like to believe it amounts to divine providence, ushered forth by the Heavenly Father himself. And that the congregation His Holiness loved so dearly can live on in peace. I leave that charge in your capable hands, Sir Nigel. Once I face my Inquisition, our most sacred of nations can finally step forward anew. And you, Lady Scarlet, please guide our flock to salvation as their new and worthy pontifex. That I can't do. I'm certain both of you know the task my father left me with. And that it's the exact reason I can't accept his position or afford to sequester myself here in the Basilica. My duty's not yet finished, and I refuse to rest until it is. Shepherding the savior of this land, hmm? Does such a savior truly exist? He does, and he stands in this very room. Prince Elaine, noble leader of the Liberation Army. <laughs> I hadn't realized. We've reason to believe that Pontifex Arant was captured by Zenoira and slain while in their custody. They needed his blood to break the seals on Fevreth's sanctuaries. The same blood that runs through Scarlet's veins. Tis why they kidnapped her not long past. Then Baltro and his minions are the ones who stole his holiness away from us. What cruel irony. I believed myself striving to restore Albion to its former glory, just as he desired. Yet I was complicit in its downfall instead, stood athwart his righteous path ere we could ever walk astride it. Tell me, why have I not faced sentence for my sins? I expect you will be, before long. But if you'd rather atone for those sins than languish in their wake, what would you say to joining our ranks? His Holiness has finally been laid to rest, and the various arms of the Orthodoxy have been informed of his passing, and that the pontificate will remain vacant until your prophesied charge is complete. Thank you, Nigel. You'll make a fine leader, I'm sure of it. I pray you're right, my lady. Sonatio shall serve as your guardian in my stead. And I shall invoke the Father's blessings every morn and eve until your eventual return. You're welcome to stay, you know. Albion would be in quite the predicament if their new Pontifex were to fall in battle. Their Pontifex won't be going anywhere. As long as I'm with you, I'm nothing more than an ordinary priestess. And... your friend, of course. Are you sure about this? I can't promise I'm the savior you seek. I can, without a shadow of a doubt. Father always knew it would be someone important to me. And... well... There's no one who fits that description more than you, Elaine. Lady Scarlet, I've word you propose a pilgrimage to the six sanctuaries of Fevrith. I do. Father bade me visit them once I had found the savior he spoke of. And that's what I plan to do, broken seals or no. Hmm. The staff His Holiness bequeathed to you houses a power unseen in any other. Perhaps its latent faculties will enable you to restore the sanctuaries to their prior function. I suppose it's possible, yes, but 
The sage in Cornea told me to first unbind the ring of the unicorn. Interesting. It would seem the ring plays an integral role in all this. In that case, let's hold off on the sanctuaries for now. After all, the ring won't be fully restored until Elaine performs the Rite of Covenant. Right. I suggest we make for the altar of the Unicorn and Maiden. What is it, Elaine? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Isn't there someone else you'd rather give it to? Or am I just the most convenient choice? Not at all. The Rite of Covenant can only be performed if the two parties are of one mind and one heart. Is that true? The rings will suffer no lies. It's you, Scarlet. It's always been you. 
These feelings I bear are not mere friendship, but a love both deep and utterly profound. I finally understand that now. You know, I always thought it was my mission that kept me standing beside you. But I realized something back when we were separated. I treasure you more than I could have ever dreamt. Then stay with me, Scarlet. Until the day we both drift off into eternal slumber. Nothing in this world could make me happier. So it's true. There's really no lying to the rings. I love you, Elaine. And I always will. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. Earn this. Now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How is he still fighting? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Shinoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. We'll never lose to the likes of you! What? Do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Hmm. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Thank the Father. She's okay. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine... I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength!
Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. We have to stop him. But if anyone can do it, it's you, the savior of Fevrith. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? You're the monster! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
An angel, here in Cornea. I dare say that's a rare sight. The Orthodoxy reveres them as an extension of the Heavenly Father himself, my prince. Do try to keep your composure. What manner of men stand before me? I am the Knight Joseph, faithful retainer of the Royal House of Cornea. Beside me is the very commander of the Liberation Army, none but the great Prince Alain. The Liberation, you say? And I'm well aware of you, Sir Joseph. Word of your exploits has long since reached my homeland. My name is Ocles, Heaven's Wing Knight of the Palavian Orthodoxy. Swords of the Liberation, I would request a kindness from you if you can spare the time. By order of His Holiness Pontifex Arant, I've been tasked with amassing luminous gemstones known commonly as Divine Shards. Those that I've unearthed, I entrusted to an old friend, a safe pair of hands who works as a cleric for the Orthodoxy. At least, it was safe. The church she shepherds, Ronmore, has been seized by a pack of brigands called the Black Talons. I turn my gaze for one ungodly moment and look what happens! <sighs> Apologies. Such a profane outburst ill befits one of my angelic stature. Regrettably, my host alone is far lacking the numbers I'd need to mount an adequate rescue. So the Black Talons continue their treachery, even without Gamel among them to chart the course. It seems this cleric is damned without our aid. We should help however we're able. My countless thanks, Prince Elaine. It's as though the Father himself delivered you to me. Mercy, please. What would the Father do? You presume to invoke our Creator's name after pillaging a place of his worship? Listen, it's my buddy's sister. Girl's barely holding on, and he's a lifetime short of the coin a healer will cost. But then this old coot comes along, saying he'll fork up a hefty price for some of them divine crystal what's it. Wasn't long after that we caught wind of the mother love they got stashed away here. Well, no ignoring that temptation. Money for an ailing sister, hmm? Huh? That sounds familiar. <laughs> a brazen lie. Spun to spare his heretical neck. Allow me to pass righteous judgment upon this sinner. Let the man go. But know this. Should you succumb to temptation again, we will not hesitate to slay you where you stand. <laughs> Spoken like true royalty. I can't thank you enough, your princeship. You would set such a villain loose upon the world. What wicked influence has corrupted you, Elaine? Lady Ocleese! My dear Sharon! The good sirs of the Liberation told me everything. I hear you sought their patronage in the hopes of ensuring my safety. You needn't worry, Lady Ocles. The shards you confided here remain untouched. The shards be damned! I placed you firmly in danger's path without but a thought for your well-being. I am deeply sorry. Please, you needn't apologize. On the contrary, this matter has cleared the doubts from my mind as though they were morning fog. Spending my days here in prayer will do naught to rid this world of the conflict which plagues it. Indeed, if I truly wish glory upon the Creator's lands, I must see it made manifest through my own actions. If such is the journey you wish to walk, I will raise no objection. The decision rests with you, kind Prince. Might you grant me the gift of joining the Liberation? I assure you, Elaine, there are few finer healers the land over. She would prove a valuable asset. 
and a reliable friend. Skilled healers such as yourself are ever in high demand. We would gladly count you among our numbers. Oh, what joy! Such a benevolent show of trust will not go unmet. You have it on my word as a servant to the Almighty. <laughs>
I've come as you asked, Elaine. What seems to be the matter? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Explain yourself. We've shared many a fierce battle since the day we first met back near Ronmore. And in all that time, I've yet to find another who I would trust more intensely with my own safety. As for my part, I've worked tirelessly to become a man deserving of one as strong and stunning as you. So what do you say? Shall we save the world, you and I together? Uh... To be frank, such cloying words set my teeth to grind. But, well... This is hardly the first time I've found myself bemused by your candor. And I suppose, somewhere along the way, I've actually grown fond of it. Do you understand? I believe I do. But I'd rather hear the sentiment in plain words, if you will. How is it that you think of me, Oclis? You'd make me spell it out for you? <sighs> I'll only say this once, so listen well. While I admit you do have a naive air about you... Go on. I've never once doubted the keenness of your blade, nor the kindness of your heart. I... I care for you deeply, Elaine. Would you mind repeating that? Just one more time. I most certainly would! I already told you, once is all you get. <sighs> now then, I'll take that ring, if you still wish to give it. It's all I could ever dream of. Thank you, Oclis, for being there when it felt like nobody else was. I could imagine no greater life than the one spent at your side. <laughs> you have a way with words. I'll give you that. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. Earn this now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Enough, Galerius! Lay down your axe and abandon this vain struggle. My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Godless fools, the both of you, will not suffer your sinful ways a moment longer. What do you think you're doing? 
Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! It's all right, Elaine. She's safe. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Indeed. Today shall see centuries of unholy evil finally put to rest. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? As fuel for my magic, most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febreth beneath its heel, perhaps? Enough of your prattle, wretched sinner. Be gone from this world! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city's very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's golden grace. Threat it! 
disciples? You dare turn on your master? The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls. The fitting end to this miserable tale. Storm's brewing, boss. That lot they call the Liberation's a step and a half from knocking on our door. What say we cut out of here before the Father sends us straight to hell? Doesn't feel right raiding a church. We go when I say we go. Now get back to work. Those crystals aren't gonna find themselves. Aye, boss, but what if the Angel comes back? And what if she does? Bird or broad, my arrows will bring him down all the same. You dare draw your bowstring at Lady Oakleith? The Father's angels are akin to his very hands. <laughs> well, I'm sure he won't mind missing a finger or two. But why don't you give him one of your little prayers if you're that worried? Lady Oakleith! My dear Sharon! The good sirs of the Liberation told me everything. I hear you sought their patronage in the hopes of ensuring my safety. You needn't worry, Lady Oakleys. The shards you confided here remain untouched. The shards be damned! I placed you firmly in danger's path without but a thought for your well-being. I am deeply sorry. Please, you needn't apologize. On the contrary, this matter has cleared the doubts from my mind as though they were morning fog. Spending my days here in prayer will do naught to rid this world of the conflict which plagues it. Indeed, if I truly wish glory upon the Creator's lands, I must see it made manifest through my own actions. If such is the journey you wish to walk, I will raise no objection. The decision rests with you, kind prince. Might you grant me the gift of joining the Liberation? I assure you, Elaine, there are few finer healers the land over. She would prove a valuable asset, and a reliable friend. Skilled healers such as yourself are ever in high demand. We would gladly count you among our numbers. Oh, what joy! Such a benevolent show of trust will not go unmet. You have it on my word as a servant to the Almighty. <laughs>
I was told you've need of me, Prince. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. You would bestow so holy a relic on me, sir? I would. Time and again, I found myself restored by your sublime healing magics. And in truth, simply having you at my side brings me more warmth and comfort than even the most soothing of flames. I only hope you'll grant me a chance to return that favor. I'm... not sure I understand. Then allow me to expound. Amidst your kindness, Sharon, I often forget that malice exists at all. Yet forgotten or not, it is always present, drowning our people in a sea of pain and hurt. Or so it would, were you not there to mend it. But who shall heal you when you falter? <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Honestly, it feels like nothing could ever hurt me while you're here. Because I know you'll do anything in the world if it means keeping me safe. I accept your proposal, Elaine. And the ring, of course. Those words are like a potent magic for my heart. Elaine, I... I fear you'll be hurt protecting me. But if you are, I'll be right there to heal your wounds. To kiss them better as well. Perhaps I could pick up a few scrapes then. And I will never allow harm to come to you. Neither now, nor ever. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Does he mean to defy us with every breath? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Cease your vain resistance, beast! We've defeated you once, and we'll do it again if we must. think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Hmm. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! <laughs> Father above! She's alive, Elaine! Speak to me, please!
I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The scission is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Let us cast this sinner to the depths of hell itself! Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? No. Our lands will be plagued by your dark ambitions no longer! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Of my knowledge, 
all of my research, lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> Your garb is unmistakable, but your name makes matters all the more certain. You must be a descendant of the old court sorceress, the great and noble Yana, who served under Queen Elenia's grandfather. Yes, I'm her granddaughter. Such knowledge brings my heart great joy. I was only but a child when I knew her, yet she left a lasting warmth few can match. I never expected to come across one of her lineage in a place as bleak and desolate as this. If I may, we caught wind of Zenoiran soldiers discussing their fruitless search for an old witch. That would be our elder, yes. We magicked her away somewhere safe in hopes of eluding their gaze. But those dogs still bear down on the hamlet, using their hunt as an excuse to tear its walls apart, board by board. A distressing tale, indeed. Though the final act is yet to be written. Please, help us break free of their bloodied fangs. You needn't so much as ask. We'll do what we must to bring an end to these abuses. Tell us, Yana, where is this elder you spoke of? Still haven't caught on, hmm? You always were the most naive pup in the litter of my little Hodrek. That name. But nobody calls me that except... except the court sorceress herself. No, I won't believe it. When I was a boy, you were already... How should I put this? Decrepit? Old? Antique? Such a form would make it painfully obvious who our village elder truly was. And an awful bother to get around at that. So I crafted a spell to peel back the years and restore my youth. Though I dare say it dampened my magic as well. Tis astonishing what miracle sorcery empowers. It's one of the most prized techniques my master taught me. And not a feat for the weak of heart, mind you. Now, I'd very much like to resume my duties. And I'd like to do so in service of the Liberation. Let this old vassal put a young hand toward restoring her homeland. The honor would be ours, Yana. It seems this swamp can offer more than just dreary weather.
You wanted something, Prince? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Well, this is a surprise. I've walked this earth for countless years and never once received such a bold proposal. Yet I would have no other, Yana. Your wisdom, your experience, and your kindness are simply put, unparalleled. I ask that you not only guide my way, but stand beside me as my bewitching bride. I admit, I was thinking I'd take up my old job as court sorcerer once the war was over, but... Queen, hmm? Your beauty would light the castle no matter what role you took. Though, I was hoping you'd choose to light my life as well. What do you say? I say that I yield. I've lived tens of thousands of days in my life. But this one is surely the happiest of them all. Uh, you mean... I'll have that ring now. And I promise, those Zenoiran fools won't touch a hair on your head as long as I'm here. We'll get through this, Elaine. Together and rebuild Cornea as husband and wife. I would have it no other way. The fate of the world rests in our hands. So why is it that I feel so blissfully warm? <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Watch yourself, Elaine. The Fiend is even tougher than he looks. My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never come to fate! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. I assure you, it won't be that simple. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that... you, Mother? Your Majesty... but how? Mother! <laughs> She's still breathing. You fought well, my Queen. Speak to me, please.
I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Baltro will rue the day he crossed our path. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing fabric beneath its heel, perhaps? A rotten worm to your very core. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Prophetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city's very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's golden grace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. Bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! This abhorrent ritual ends now! <sighs> Oh, my research! 
lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> A moment, Your Highness. Word has crossed my ear of a challenge issued by a woman named Berenice. You know of her? I do, in truth. Clive, Clive, Clive. Didn't anyone ever teach you it's not nice to go spilling other people's secrets? I have to say, I should have known you'd wind up a rank and file with these high, strong liberation types. Do you have any concept of whose honor you mock? His Highness Elaine is the lost son of Queen Elenia, and rightful heir to the Cornian crown. Surely you've no cause to raise arms against one such as he. Funny thing, that. It actually gives me more reason to fight. Need to see if you've got the goods to take on Galerius. Or if your heads will be stuck on a pike like all the rest. Stay your tongue. She's right, Clive. If I can't claim victory here, what hope do I ever have of vanquishing Zenoira? <laughs> now that's the spirit. Don't disappoint me, Prince. <laughs> Didn't expect that out of you. But I'm not lying down just yet! How many times must I prove myself? Your proposal was for an honest challenge, Berenice. One my lord has overcome with ease. Be done with this stubbornness at once. Sorry. Bad habit. Turns out, you're full of more than just hot air. The fort and village are yours. And now that I'm a free blade, I have half a mind to enlist in this merry band of yours myself. If I want to take the Emperor's head, and believe me, I do, this'll be by far my quickest option. A mercenary of your caliber would prove a welcome addition indeed. We'd be pleased to have you. You won't regret it. That's a promise. <laughs> Looks like there's no escaping me, Clive. Ah, uh, but before I forget, what was it that Clive was so intent on telling me? Nothing gets by you, does it? I can answer that query, Your Highness. Don't even think about it! Such secrecy only piques my interest further. Ugh. It's not really a story worth telling, but fine. I used to be a knight, too, just like our friend here. That is, till the day I got in one little brawl and wound up tossed out on my tail end. Been living the merc life ever since. The fault lies wholly with a wretched aristocrat by the name of Gailey, Your Highness. Berenice bears no blame. Doesn't matter much now either way. So, yeah, hope you're satisfied. Let's never bring it up again.
Here you've got words for me, Elaine. What can I do for you? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. <sighs> and here I was hoping you wanted to spar. Too bad. Berenice, please. <laughs> Sorry, bad habit. We've let our swords do the talking enough. By now, I know what you're feeling, even without steel in your hand. We've locked blades countless times of late. I have the scars to prove it. And yet, I treasure each one as a lasting symbol of our unity. You're the finest partner I could ever ask for, Berenice. Both in sparring and in life. Uh, I saw this coming from a mile away, but I had no idea it would feel so... embarrassing. <laughs> Just know that I'm not gonna stop training until I finally overtake you. So don't use this oath as an excuse to slack off, or I'll be at your heels in no time flat. Of course. I'll strive to remain strong and able as long as years allow it. Guess that's it then. Now, I was thinking we could use a session or two to really get us ready for Galerius. What do you say? It would be a pleasure. Wherever you lead, I'll gladly follow. <laughs> <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! You want more, huh? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Big talk for a guy who just lost! We'll beat you however many times it takes! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Hmm. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty, but how? Mother! It's okay, Elaine. She's still breathing. Speak to me, please. You fought valiantly, Elenia. But this battle has reached its conclusion. You're wrong. And I shall have your head for thinking otherwise! Uh, 
Your hubris was the end of you, Valmor. What sorcery is this? Do you see now the futility of your struggle? By cutting me down, you have doomed yourself to a life reborn as my new vessel. Madness. How does Valmor yet live? He doesn't. The man was a simple human. Undeserving of the glorious soul of an emperor. Name yourself at once! I am Baltro. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. The old bastard's not leaving here alive! Come home, both of you. On the souls of Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing fabrics beneath its heel, perhaps? I'm getting real sick of this guy. Finish him off, Elaine. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Disciple! 
Rebels! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the Unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! Just one last push!
Is there something I can help you with, Your Majesty? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. I had a feeling that might be why you asked me here, but... I don't know. There must be someone else who deserves it more than I do. I'm meant to give this ring to whomever I trust most. And when I pause to think who that may be, yours was the first and only face that crossed my mind. I... Really? You know, you can just tell me if you're not interested. Apologies, that's not how I meant to phrase it. What I truly wish to say is, your presence is what gives me the strength to march on day after day. You would be doing this whether I'm here or not, and you know it. But... I'm sick of seeing you like this, Elaine. All these years, I've watched you grow more and more into the ideal prince. But I know that's not who you really are. So cut the act, at least when you're with me. I'll do it. Swear the oath, I mean. Thank you, Chloe. But only if I can spend more time with you. The real you. <laughs> I'm serious. That means the world to me, truly. You'll have to prove it then. Let's see how good you are at dropping that princely mask of yours. I shall endeavor to do so in all that I am. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! We have to regroup, your majesty! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. We'll never be your puppets, fiend! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Elenia! She's alive! Speak to me, please!
I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. You'll have my spear as long as you need it. Let's finish this. Come home, both of you. On the souls of Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevris beneath its heel, perhaps? I refuse to hear another word of it. Your vile schemes end here. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Who of my knowledge, 
all of my research. Lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> No money for a hired sword, either. Excuse us, ma'am. Is something the matter? Oh, whatever am I to do? She seems not to have hurt me. How can I fight the soldiers of the damned? Let me talk to her. Hello? <gasps> when did you... How did you... Who are you people? We're with the Liberation Army. Ah, the ones who defy Zenoira's rule. Our apologies for startling you. Nonsense. I share the blame for not minding my surroundings. May we ask what you're doing here, exactly? I was researching this magic sigil. But I've encountered a roadblock. One I have no possible means of resolving alone. What kind of roadblock are we talking? When I awakened the sigil, it breathed life into spectral beings. Warriors lost to time, who attacked me with reckless abandon. Hey! Warn a guy before you start telling ghost stories. Yet you appear to be unharmed. How about that? Well, I wasn't finished with my story, now was I? As the phantoms creeped ever closer, I was certain my time was finally up. I closed my eyes and waited for the end. But it never came. There wasn't so much as a scratch on my beautiful skin. Odd. After repeated attempts met the same conclusion, I've reached a hypothesis. These ghosts, as you call them, are nothing more than illusions birthed of an ancient sorcery. And the grounds we stand upon were used in days of yore to cultivate strength against the antagonistic apparitions. Yeah, that's... A lot you just dropped on us. What I'm not getting is, how's any of that a problem? If they can't lay a finger on you, it should be easy enough to keep doing your thing, right? That depends on the thing. I want to know what happens when all of the Sigil's guardians are defeated. Oh, but I'm just one woman, and hardly capable of such a feat alone. Hence the worry. Yes, I've made it my goal of late to study the effects of combating the illusions. And should you be willing to help with my research, I'd be more than glad to join this liberation of yours. I understand. We'll do whatever we can to assist. I was hoping you'd say that. Lady's got me all curious now. You mean it? Oh, that's wonderful!
Yes, yes, hilarious joke. Well done. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Glad you had your bit of fun for the day. I'll just be going now. Did you hear me, Selfie? This is no joke. What? You mean... you're serious? Entirely. There's no one I'd rather spend the rest of my life with than you. The ring is yours, assuming you want it. How could I say no after such a romantic proposal? Nobody else treats me the way you do, Elaine. And I feel exactly the same. I couldn't imagine life without you. Now, how do we do this? You can start by giving me your hand. So this is the Ring of the Maiden. Hmm, fascinating. I can feel a strange power flowing through every inch of my body. I suppose that means the pact is sworn. Though I must say, this ring is quite the curio. <laughs> yes, I think it'll do nicely for my experiments. Just try not to break it, please. How could you even suggest such a thing? I'll treasure it for as long as I live. <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! So he can still fight? The thought alone sends chills down my spine. My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. You'll not find our pride so easy to break. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that... you, Mother? Your Majesty... but how? Mother! I could never have foreseen this, but... it's all right, Elaine. She's alive! Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. 
It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war. Here and now. And destroying that sigil is the way we'll do it. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, my might is eternal. Do not seek their resurrection. <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing over the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more? There would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing fabric beneath its heel, perhaps? The only summoning you'll do is that of your own demise. Prepare yourself for the blackest void, foul creature! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Thank you. 
The liberation, huh? Way I've heard it, they're barely old enough to drink, let alone wage righteous war. <laughs> Captain! Pray, leave this matter to me. Whatever vain title these rebels have granted themselves, they're not but a pack of spoiled striplings playing knight. Huh? Huh? Striplings who'll soon find their bones pounded to flour. Well, convince me. The vanguard's yours. Just uh, keep your head strapped on, will you? We're thieves, not common thugs. You have my word, sir. I don't know about that new recruit of yours, boss. The girl's got guts and she works like a mule. But she ain't common folk like us. Last I remember, I never asked you your pedigree. And I don't care to ask hers, neither. Enough of this savagery, Nina. Come home, I beg of you. I have no home. Not anymore. My failure as a knight has stamped a permanent blemish on our noble family's honor. That's what father would say. I'm certain of it. If I may, Millet is here because she loves you, Nina. Honor and knighthood have nothing to do with it. The rift in your family is stark, that much I can tell. But I'd advise you mend it all the same. If not for you, then for your sister. I'll not take counsel from a blue-haired fop, thank you. As if you could possibly understand the pain I've suffered. I hope you get tiny bits of eggshell in all your omelets for the rest of your life! So much for convincing her. Hot her blood boils, that's as harsh as her tongue can get. She truly is proper to a fault. Long were the days she'd wax poetic about the virtues of knighthood, and her dream of becoming a shield to the weak. Not exactly a temperament suited to banditry. Looks like all our boys made it out in one piece. Shook off anyone that might be following, too. Rats ain't the sharpest animal in the bunch, but we always know when to tuck our tails and scurry home. I've failed you, Captain. I made lofty promises of a victory fair and true, yet all I could muster was a beaten whimper. And now we've lost the very stronghold we call home. Couple of walls don't mean we can to a pack of thieves. It's not like us to stick around one place too long anyway. But I am cutting you loose. I'm... sorry? Well, never came up before, but us rats don't got much in the way of family. Orphans and scamps, the whole lot. How does that... A fellow of yours gave me the whole scoop. You got people out there who want you home more than life itself. Those people are nothing to me. I've renounced my past just like they renounced me. You say that now, but you'll regret it when death comes knocking. There's no making good with a tombstone, kid. So go on, your sister's waiting for you. Don't forget to take your share of the loot on your way out. Oh, and get out of the thieving life, will ya? Get yourself clean before the dirt's sunk in too deep to wash off. My friends...
I find it difficult to consider this campaign a successful one. We set the bandits to rout, but lost sight of Nina in the process. You have my gratitude nonetheless, Your Highness. I'll begin my search for her anew right away. Nina! I accept defeat. You win, Millet. Then you'll come home with me? A mother and father have been beside themselves with worry. That I can't do. Not yet. Whatever do you mean? I first plan to join the Liberation, and fight beside them to bring Zenoira to heal. You do? All this time I fussed and fretted over achieving knighthood. But a woman needs no title to stand in defense of another. True enough. And thus I'll fight, and see my dream of shielding the weak fulfilled. It's a tough gig, you know. We'd all have kicked it a hundred times over if we didn't have Elaine here leading the charge. Not to mention that we're almost always outnumbered. Though all the more reason to accept volunteers, I'd say. I'm prepared to weather whatever hardship comes before us. What do you say, Your Highness? Will you grant me the honor I so greatly desire? A fair proposal. It is a noble cause to stand in defense of those who can't defend themselves. It's one I aspire to myself. Let us take up that fight together. My thanks, Your Highness. As for the rest of you, I'll dedicate every fiber of my being to our cause. I only request your patience as I do so. You don't even have to ask. Good to have you aboard, Nina. Can't complain about another pair of hands. I see there'll be no dissuading you on this. Rest assured, you can leave matters at home to me. Thank you, Millet. And please, tell mother and father I love them. No more running, huh? Do whatever you want to me, but I promise you'll let my men walk. Your Highness, I beg you, show mercy to this wayward soul. The Rock Rats are thieves, there can be no denying that. Yet they've never once taken from the weak or infirm. Bryce, was it? How would you feel about lending your might to the Liberation? Not interested. Oh, you talk a good talk, I'll give you that. But you're still royal filth, and you'll steal from us just like all the rest. So yeah, no thanks. Captain, please. Elaine is different. When he first fled Palavia, he only had six men to his name. Yet now he stands with an army at his back. An impenetrable wall built one cobble at a time. Much like the Rock Rats, His Highness has faced the same struggles we have, and met them head on. People change, Nina. And there's no crueler man than the bottom dweller turned Baron. They get desperate to cling to their newfound power, forget how to trust, turn on those they once called friends. Then why not watch over me yourself? If I ever prove unworthy of the crown, you're free to run me through with that spear. Huh. <laughs> I only ask that you fight beside us all the while. It will take all manner of strength and experience to slay Galerius and restore peace to this chaotic land. And the persistence of a rat who can survive such turmoil is a boon I would be foolhardy not to welcome. Fine then. Consider me convinced. But it'll only be me joining you. After everything I've put them through, my men deserve to finally settle down. Get some rest. Start a family. Not to mention that this city will need protection. Very well. I'll grant that request. Thank you, Your Highness. You've done a great deed this day.
Your Highness? I was told you had a matter to discuss. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. What? I don't mean to challenge you, but why me? Isn't it obvious? Your heart is as straight and true as the finest arrow, and you grow ever stronger with even the slightest stumble. Such steadfast resolve brings to mind my own shortcomings, and the lengths to which I must go to overcome them. Yet with you at my side, no obstacle is too great. Not even Galerius himself. Hence, I would ask you to stay there as my resplendent queen for the rest of our mortal days. I... I feel much the same. I'm always able to push myself that little bit further whenever you're near. Even should I stumble, even should I fall, I know you'll be right there to pick me up again, no matter how hard I may hit the ground. In truth, you've helped me come to love myself more than I thought possible. So as long as you promise to never leave me, I would be honored to accept your ring. And I would be honored to grant it. Thank you, Nina. I've never known a joy this intense in all my years, though I'm sure our life together will bring plenty more. Indeed it will. Today marks our first step down a new path, one we walk hand in loving hand. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Obstinate to the very end! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Your struggle will fall in vain, devil! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Not Elaine. She's safe. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. 
If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long drawn war. Here and now. Yes, your highness. The sigil shall shatter beneath our combined strength. Come home, both of you. Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, I might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more? There would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Speak all you want! Our lands shall never see your horrors again! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The seat of very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only skin awaiting you, Ultra, is Death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. And bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! We'll condemn this fiend back to the hell he crawled out of! <laughs>
It's truly an honor, Your Majesty. I am Miriam, humble servant of the Knights of the Rose. Your order answered directly to my mother, yes? But I fear I don't recall ever meeting you. I, I hope I've not offended. You've not. Ten years past, I was but a squire, and in no position to have made your acquaintance. Ahem. And what of Kitra? She went ahead to scout the city, but we've since lost contact. In sooth, I worry for her safety. Times such as these make me thankful for Fran and her griffin. They have taken wing, and scour the ground as we speak. Then we may leave the search to her. But what about us, my prince? Joseph has readied an encampment in a nearby field. We make for battle as soon as preparations allow it. And if Renault is truly bound by the same magic Hodric was, the ring should release him with little issue. Now come, you quit awaits, and Scarlet with her. How can I be of assistance, Your Highness? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Uh, oh, I... Are you certain I'm deserving of such an honor? I am. I'd see it passed to none but you. 
I cannot accept. And might I ask why? Because, Your Highness, you've only made this request to appease my father. I would never. This is a matter of the heart, not a political transaction. You say that, and yet, most would struggle to see it any other way. Tis vexing indeed, to live a life wholly and completely ordained by a parent. But someday, I shall carve a new path. One that I, and only I, walk. So forgive me, Your Highness. As I am now, I have no choice but to refuse. Miriam, wait. I asked you here because the ring belongs to you. Not your father, and certainly not anyone else. I mean that with every ounce of my being. And if I may, you already walk beneath your own sun. A star that burns not through filial obligation, but immense strength of will. Now please, tell me how you truly feel. Elaine, I... I trust you speak those words with the purest intentions. And I thank you for announcing them. In sooth, when I heard you had summoned me here, well... My heart nearly burst forth from my chest. I want nothing more than to feel that same feeling every day of my life. To stand beside you as your loving betrothed. And I promise, I'll never hide myself from you again. I want you to see me as I really am. Nothing more and nothing less. Thank you, Miriam. Such bold declarations are not easy to make, yet you've shown great courage in doing so. I must be wearing the most untoward smile right now, but I fear I can't help it. Tis nothing to be ashamed of. I find it charming, in fact. Do you? But it's so very undignified. <laughs> I'll have you not laugh at my struggles, thank you. <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! From where does he draw such limitless power? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh! Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Have you not learned by now? You shall never defeat us, wretched tyrant! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty.
Majesty. But how? Mother! <sighs> what fortune! She appears unharmed. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. And the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Let us teach the pain of ruin to sorcerer and sigil alike. Come home, both of you. Feast on the souls of Zenoira. My might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? They are not your pawns to gambit as you wish! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Oh! Their strength is leaving me! You've ruined everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. The seat of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we've arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! Disciples, you dare turn on your master! The time has come, Elaine. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! The end is finally upon us! Oh! <gasps>
My Lizzie beckons. All of my knowledge, all of my research, lost to the endless emptiness of time. Lord Gislaine, sir. Another village has succumbed. Then you know what must be done. Gather them into the holding pens, the fit and the infirm alike. Both will be of use to us. Is that wise in this downpour, sir? Some of the inhabitants have grown quite frail. The march of progress ever demands new feet to walk it. There can be no tests without subjects. And those unwilling to sacrifice will never know the sublime beauty of discovery. I assure you, I wouldn't complain were a few pitiful souls to perish in transit either. Sir Baltro. Come to glean more corpses, have you? Take what you will. We've enough rotting flesh to satisfy even your ravenous want for death. Though... Not for long, perhaps. This may be the final slew I'm able to offer. And the experiments are proving successful. That's not for you to know. Now have you come to collect? Or do you simply wish to interrogate us instead? <laughs> Neither. Those who defy Zenoira's rule draw close to your land. His Majesty would see them tossed like all the rest upon your mountains of carrion. The rebels? Here? No. I've come too far to let my work fall unfinished. You've little need to worry. My men are yours to command in the battle ahead. A welcome gift, and one I'll gladly accept. Tatiana. Stay here and ensure the experiments continue as scheduled. Yes, my lord. Guards, rally the defenses. We depart anon. Gislaine <sighs> uh. has completed the cure, has he? It was only a matter of time, but with all the vital support I've thrown at his back. Your hubris knows no bounds, wretch. One as revolting as you is unfit to stand in the company of Lord Gislaine. Only by his word have I let your presence go unimpeded. Now go. Gather the dead and be quit of this manner before you drain my patience any further. <laughs> Gislaine, how could you take him from me? What have you found? Horrors taking form, my prince. The jail is rife with corpses of the townsfolk in every which corner. Likely victims of the plague. Tell our men to stay well clear of its walls. But of course. Rumors speak of your lord using his own people for dark experiments into the plague that sweeps this land. What say you? That you're a band of benighted fools if you believe such tripe. Come on, Elaine. There's only one way to find out what he was up to. We've got to search the manor. 
You won't disturb Lord Jeslaine's research. Not while I still draw breath. Then perhaps you'd be willing to serve as our guide instead. Tell us everything that's transpired here, Tatiana. Please. This manor is where Lord Jeslaine conducted his research. You know, I was expecting some kind of horrible monster under that mask. Turns out you're just a regular girl. It was years ago that this horrific illness first emerged, swept through our populace like the fiercest wildfire. Lord Jeslaine's wife was among the victims. He was never quite the same after that. So intense was his contempt for the plague, he made it his sole mission in life to find the cure. Even if it meant enlisting the services of a monstrous necromancer. And thus, Gislaine victimized his own people for his experiments, then proffered their vacant bodies before this necromancer. You misjudge him. My lord studied every method, every medicine in his quest to rid the world of this plague. Absent a clear answer, he had little choice but to craft hypotheses and pursue them to their natural conclusions. No solution could be discarded without explicit proof of its faults, nor could any be affirmed as truly effective. Such excuses are lost on the dead. Their sacrifices were not in vain. You imply he found a cure? Not completely. The texts he was given were rife with half-truths and outright lies alike. But the seed is there. And it can grow, if you only let me water it. Please, the answer is finally within arm's reach. Hmm. A cure would be most welcome indeed, were this disease to befall our army. Though... Should it mean allowing such ignominious research to continue unabated? What say you, my prince? You have my trust, Tatiana. Take up the duty Gislaine held so dear and see it through to the very end. <sighs> what about the rumors? Buying into this thing's not gonna reflect on us too good. We meet them head on. As long as the sick are treated with dignity and honor, that tide will turn. In the end, these studies are meant to benefit all who call Fevrith home. If he was even half the man you claim, that was Lord Gislaine's intention from the very beginning. Am I to face no sentence? Our enemy here is Zenoira, not you. You only mean to shackle me in their stead. The Liberation exists to grant freedom, not oppress the downtrodden further. In that case, I'd like to exercise my freedom to join you on that journey. What about your cure? To be candid with you, it's almost finished. Enough so that I needn't stay here myself. My men should be more than capable of handling the rest. As for me... I'll take this opportunity to walk beside the man who robbed this world of Lord Gislaine's grace. To see what ideals he chooses to fight, and ultimately to die for. And, when that moment inevitably arrives, to be the one to sound the death knell myself. Come on, only an idiot would let you- Very well then. Should have known that was coming. Be warned, you may be awaiting my death a great many years. That, and you'll be expected to earn your keep in the meantime. Welcome to the Liberation, Tatiana.
A fine place you have here. What's the meaning of this? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. <sighs> I knew you were a strange one from the moment we met. I've been an outcast my entire life. Reviled, shunned by the world. But you and Lord Gislaine greeted me with acceptance, not hate. I merely did what I felt was right. Then tell me, what happens once you give me the ring? First, we bring Zenoira's reign to an end. You and I, together. After that, I could entice you back to Cornea. Perhaps as the royal physician. Or more, if you are so willing. Looking to keep me as close as possible, I see. Are you sure you're ready for all that entails? I've never been readier for anything. This ring is proof of that. <laughs> I can think of no greater way to observe your death than to stand with you in life. Just know that I'm not giving it back, even if you change your mind years in the future. Nor could I ever want you to. Uh, and Elaine... Maybe forget what I've said about that dying business. I don't think I could bear losing you. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! The Spectre doesn't know when he's lost! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh! Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Put another way, as long as we avoid your grasp, your plan is doomed to fail. think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. She appears to be quite stable. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine... I can't say how much time has passed since that day. 
But you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The scission is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long drawn war. Here and now. Today shall be the day Baltro draws his final breath. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more? There would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? We'll not suffer your noxious torment any longer, wretched corpse! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Leaving me! You've ruined everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The sigil's very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's golden grace. Wretched <laughs> disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! It seems we're of the same mind then.
<laughs> you call that a swing? I'm hand my friend, Nave. Why don't you make us, if you and that toothpick of a sword even can? What shall we do, my prince? We teach them that tormenting the innocent is not a hobby that comes without its price. Are you hurt? No, ma'am. Thank you. What a striking figure. Just who is she? Monica. Laika! Thank the Father you're all right. I'm sorry to worry you, Hans. Don't be. This wasn't your fault. And you, Sir Alec. Words will forever fail to capture my gratitude for what you've done this day. We'll never forget this, brave hero. Please, your continued safety is thanks enough. Our role in this is concluded, my lady. I trust you'll see them to sound shelter. Whatever Kerr has claimed you're not but a reclusive coward, they're dead wrong. I suppose that's what I get for believing rumors. Forgive me, Prince Elaine. You must have me confused. I'm... Champion of the Rebel Army and lost son of Queen Elenia. I'm well aware. Enlighten me, Monica. If you knew Elaine was the Prince, why did you leave us to dispatch those rogues by ourselves? You speak as though you have no blame in the matter. Or do you greet all your acquaintances with such shameless detachment? You know her, Clive? In a manner of speaking, yes. The woman before you is Lady Monica, beloved granddaughter to Cornea's own Marquis Nordheim. And though the affair is years since buried, by a compact reached between the Marquis and mine own grandfather, the Count, she was my fiance as well. This is a great deal to grasp. Ex-fiance would be more accurate, Your Highness. As for you, Clive, I've no doubt you're aware of the shadow your liberation antics cast over my family. Zenoira confiscated our territory, stripped us of our title, and what scant land we were seen fit to retain stood on the farthest fringes of the entire kingdom. Monica, I... I'm sorry. I never meant for any of this. And I never asked for your apology. It's as you say, long buried neath the sands of time. In any case, our land now rests firmly in Zenoira's steeled fist, and I haven't the authority to let the Liberation cross it. But... Oh, don't look at me like that. We all know the tale. Yesterday's fiancé becomes today's foe. A story as tragic as it is trite. But I've made my peace with what must be done. Then prove it. You've shod this horse? Now show me how you ride. Though a suggestion, if I may. Don't stay your hand. One false step, and you'll find yourself the freshest corpse in the body pit. Just like those rogues before you. What word of the Revels? Still cornered in San Larish, ma'am. But they'll be prepared to march at any moment, by my estimate. Then we resolve to face them head on. Give word of such to any man or woman fit for battle. Whoever brings me the heads of these insurgents can name their reward. Yes, ma'am. Stare any harder and you'll pierce clean through me. Do you object, Matthias? Indeed, I do. Hmm. Clive and this liberation of his mean to threaten us into submission and resist Zenoira rule besides. My judgment is sound. I'm certain of it. I've served beneath you a great many years, my leash. A decade past, you would have clutched the mantle of freedom even tighter than Sir Clive does now. And I suspect that fire in your belly burns yet brighter than you'd have me believe. We both know the inferno such flame can bring. The other noble houses had long held us in kind esteem. Yet when Grandfather refused to bend the knee to Galerius, they forsook us like we were common swine. 
In the end, his banishment and the confiscation of our lands were the price we paid for survival. If one as proud and dignified as he could be dragged to such depths, I dare not imagine myself immune. My liege. The territory stripped from us is now lorded over by aristocrats loyal to the might of Zenoira. But they spurn proper leadership and grow fat off the very lifeblood of our citizens. Far too many have suffered as it stands. I won't condemn still more to the slaughter. Even if it means cutting Clive down myself. Well met, Prince. I surrender. My life is yours to claim, should you but promise to let my soldiers free. I'll promise nothing. We come for peace, not blood. Now the rostrum is yours, Clive. Go on. What could you possibly have left to say to me? Only the truth, Monica. Marquis Nordheim is a key benefactor to the Liberation. He what? In our fledgling days, we had no backing to speak of, and not to fill our coffers but dust and cobwebs. Until, that is, your grandfather took it upon himself to fund our development. By his words, he'd much sooner see his wealth invested in Cornea's future than stripped barren by its captors. <sighs> you mean to say this struggle lacked purpose? To tell me now, at its conclusion? I do not. What remains of your noble house could never risk having its fealty questioned by its Zenoiran masters. Hence, the Marquis sent us here. They will hear you fought valiantly, and were left with no choice but to capitulate. Wonderful. A drama to rival the scripts of the masters, and I the only one to improvise her lines. Tis entirely too believable coming from that old fox. But should my grandfather wish it, I've no place to disagree. Grant me permission to join the cause, your highness. Any objections, Clive? Not a one. The Marquis knew all along how this would play out. Questionable though his methods may be, the man clearly bears a vast and profound love for his granddaughter. then we mustn't do that love a disservice. Not to mention our dire need of reinforcements. Come with us, Monica, and strike true your blade for the liberation. You shall know none truer. And mind you don't meet its edge yourself, my former betrothed. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Was there something you wished to discuss, my prince? This is quite the lovely spot for a chat. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. That's a bold declaration there. When we first locked swords, I saw in you a knight of firm convictions, and truly immense skill. 
With one such as you beside me, I'm certain we can bring Galerius to heal. So that's how it is. You desire my strength, yet care not for matters of my heart. Father forbid. I assure you, that's not how I meant it. I only ask this of you as the one I trust most. The one I love. <laughs> oh, but it is fun to watch you squirm. Pray, do not tease me so. If you insist. But allow me to return your sincerity in kind. I could never refuse this offer. Not after the next king so boldly professed his love. As you know, my life has long been devoted to Cornea and her people. And I would be honored to continue on that path of devotion as your beloved wife. Thank you, Monica. Under our shared rule, Cornea shall finally know a new dawn. A brighter dawn, free of violence and cruelty. You know, I never realized just how cute this little ring would be. I wonder how that ex-fiancé of mine will react when he sees it. Please, don't torment the man more than strictly necessary. <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira! Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How was he yet standing? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh! Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Trade in idle words all you wish. We'll never allow it. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! By the Father's grace, she still breathes, Elaine. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence.
feet, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long drawn war. Here and now. Our march could only ever reach one conclusion. Onward to the closing act. Come home, both of you. Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, I might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Wild ramblings of a man gone mad. Let us bring this fiend to justice. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Oh! His strength is leaving me! You ruined everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. And how my tale concludes. I won't allow it. The only snake awaiting you, Ultra, is death's golden grace. Wretched disciples, you dare turn on your master. The time. Let us lift the curse of the Unicorn, and bring the salvation of Heaven to these lost souls! Today, this vile candle is snuffed out at last.
I'm sick of sitting on my hands all day. Why does war have to be so boring? Those morons will pay for stationing me in the middle of absolute nowhere! Lower your voice, Lady Melisandre. There's no telling whose ears lie behind what corners. Anyone worth half a damn wouldn't bother listening to my drivel. I swear fealty to Galerius, and this is my prize? Enough. This querulous nonsense is unbecoming of the storied House Maye's sole survivor. Your relation to the family line- Can we please not go into this now? I'd rather not feel belittled by my glorious ancestors today. Urgent news, milady! Speak. It's the rebels, sir. They're approaching our camp. Marching from Lisbouche, hmm? This all comes far sooner than I'd expected. And if the reports are to be believed, it seems His Highness Elaine leads the charge. That's the best news I've heard in months. This Elaine fellow might as well be hand-delivering our long-lost glory himself. Ah, there's the Lady Melisandre I know. I just hope he's easy on the eyes, too. And there's the other side of her. Can't you tell a joke when you hear one? He could be the most handsome man in the world, and I'd still fight just the same. Now, prepare for the assault. And station a separate contingent you know where. Yes, milady. Sound the alarm whistle. I want all lieutenants ready for battle at once. How old was that prince meant to be again? It would be an awful shame if he breathed his last before I got a good look at him. Maybe I'll just take a quick pre-battle peek. And why shouldn't I? There's not a man in the world who could hope to equal me. What shall be done with her, my prince? I know how this goes. I'm prepared for any fate you see fit. Come, Melisandre. You belong with me. Was that a proposal? I... Perhaps I misspoke. I mean that you belong with us. The Liberation, that is. We have great need of fighters of your distinction. Oh. Well, I suppose it's still a tempting offer. You mean to accept, milady, but their hopes of success are nigh non-existent. Think for a minute, Colm. What did our loyalty to Galerius get us besides tedium and depression? And now that we failed him, he's bound to complete the trifecta with our heads on the chopping block. A fair point. We'd more than likely face the same fate were we to decline the Liberation's offer besides. In truth, no odds are too small when they're the sole chance to preserve your noble lineage. Speaking of that lineage, just imagine. Cornea's illustrious House Maye, allied with the rebels who seek to reclaim her status. Why, we'd be a prized feather in their cap. Isn't that right, Elaine? I wouldn't dare disagree. Our union would be a significant one indeed. Then it's settled. I should say, I've taken quite a liking to you. Know that that's why I'm joining. Above anything else. Thank you, Melisandre. That's not all I want, though. Once you claim the throne, I'll be expecting a place at your side for real. 
Sorry? Oh, don't worry. I'm not asking to be queen. Just one of the few dozen consorts every king calls upon. Fascinating, yes. Let's discuss it another time, shall we? <laughs> Elaine, is this what I think it is? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. You mean, you'll take me as your bride? Me? Above all others? That's my wish, yes. This... barely feels real. I'm not dreaming, am I? I assure you, you're wide awake. Uh. <laughs> you were hardly subtle in your approach when first we met. Now, allow me to return the favor. Your hand, please. And with that, our oath is sworn. Huh. Oh, Elaine. 
Chandra Maye, pledge to stand at your side through whatever may come, through times both good and bad. And I know what I said before, but don't go taking any wives but me, or consorts. I promise, you're the only one I could ever need. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Be careful, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Haven't you brought enough pain to this world already? What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! She's breathing, and steadily at that. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! Prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Don't worry. We'll see it through to the very last. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst I still feel... 
feast of the souls of Zenoira. I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing over the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? You're the monster! And you're about to pay for toying with people's lives! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me. Is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Yeah. Oh! Their strength is leaving me! Souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The sit of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come. Let us lift the curse of the Unicorn, and bring the salvation of Heaven to these lost souls! You and I, as one! Huh? Joseph! Do mine eyes deceive me, Virginia? You were but a teenager when last we met, but now you stand a princess fair and true. A lot can change in ten years. 
Indeed it can. I'm relieved to see you safe. The same to you. When our scouts brought word of your army's approach, I knew I had to verify the report for myself. Scouts, my lady? But I was led to believe you were in hiding. <sighs> I was sent here to Drakenhold ten years past, as a refugee when Galerius brandished his sword against our family. I've been in the care of their second prince, Gilbert, ever since. Forgive me for not coming to your aid sooner. There's nothing to forgive. My attendant Leia sees my every need fulfilled and more. The issue at hand, your ladyship? <laughs> yes, yes. Go on, then. The good Prince Gilbert is currently amassing troops at Balmrate in hopes of recapturing his castle. We ask that you and your soldiers cooperate in that siege. But such a request must surely meet the approval of your commander. Might we solicit an audience? Oh, I almost forgot. Where is he? Huh? It's been too long, Virginia. Is that you, Elaine? I barely recognized you, grown as you are. You know, I can still remember when you were just a babe at your mother's breast. And now look at you. Even taller than I am. I believe I was seven when last we met, and weaned for years by then. What I mean to say is, I'm proud of you. That, and that my blade belongs to this liberation of yours from here forward. Your ladyship, please. Have you forgotten you're still under Prince Gilbert's protection? This isn't a decision you should make without at least consulting him first. I don't need his protection, not anymore. Though, I admit, I owe him quite a lot for what he's done. I don't plan on letting that debt go unpaid. Which is exactly why Elaine here is going to help us, yes? Everybody wins by my count. Satisfied? If not, there's always room at my side for a hard-to-please attendant. <laughs> Hey, uh, you sure about this? She seems more like a windstorm than a princess. Queen Elenia often spoke of how young Virginia reminded her so greatly of herself as a child. And I must say, the resemblance is striking. She was always more sister than cousin to me, in truth. Whenever I needed an ear, hers was the first I'd pull. In any case, Leia, the Liberation Army will answer your call. And thank you again for the kindness you've shown Virginia all these years. I know she can be a bit... difficult. Tis no greater kindness than yours, Prince. Cornea's aid is a beacon of light in our darkest hour. Know that my life is ever in your service, and that of the glory of Drakenhold. We've done it, Prince Elaine. Zenoira's grip on this land is no more. A feat only possible through your unceasing effort. Now, allow me to present a former general in their ranks. This is Berengaria. Uh, <sighs> I said it wouldn't be easy, but I guess this is you we're talking about. Ren! Travis, what in the devil's tale are you doing here? I should be asking you the same thing. Why is my own sister siding with Zenoira? Did you forget what those bastards did to our father? How they slaughtered him before our very eyes? Answer me! I... I can't. Not yet. But what about you, huh? I told you plain, I don't want you near me. Now go home and bury yourself in your beloved books, why don't you? Things have changed, Ren. I fight to sever the hand of tyranny, while you sit here feasting out of its palm. <sighs> That's not fair. You know it. I wasn't aware they were siblings. Not especially close ones, it would seem. I'd suggest you stay out of it, Leia. 
They say time heals all wounds, but a scar that deep <laughs> may take an entire lifetime. Ah, such stifling heat. Indeed, my prince. Traversing the sands without a guide will prove an endeavor most perilous. Heat's not the only thing that will choke you out here. What do you mean? These wastes were once a place of exile for the convicts and criminals of Drakenhold. Even to this day, the people live in tense isolation, eager to assail anyone who comes from beyond its bounds. Not to mention the plethora of bandit camps. Each lays claim to a swath of land, and would lay down their lives to see it protected. <sighs> their thieving is what keeps the citizens of this region from feeding on more than just sand and empty dreams. And they help thin the ranks of Drakenhold's foul aristocrats, so the kingdom is more than willing to turn a blind eye. All that to say, it's no place for royalty like us. It's as if these barons are another nation entirely. Hmm. Just a sec there. Impertinent Cretan. Does this look like a conversation you should be interrupting? Did mean to offend. Anyways, it's kind of awkward saying this after that spiel about it being a criminal wasteland. But this is where I grew up. <sighs> The way I hear it, Zenora's running the show now. Don't know why they'd wanna, but they are. You mind if I scout things out? See what's going on? I got friends here. Family, really, just without the blood binding us. I'm worried sick about them. And hey, I'll make sure those royal heads stay right on your shoulders where they belong. I admit, a local guide would be helpful. The decision is yours, Elaine. If the people of these dunes suffer under Zenoira's heel, then they deserve the same aid we offer everyone else. That, and I worry for Aubin's family. Let's be off. Appreciate it, boss. Damn. Not my best gamble. Fetch me the axe, Elaine. Whoa, hold on there, lady. At least let a guy beg for his neck, will ya? I was just putting you into a little test, that's all. No bad blood, I swear it. <laughs> and what about the blood of your men? Do you feel nothing for those you've lost? Doesn't matter what I feel, tears won't bring them back. But listen, I'm all in on this liberation of yours. I'll have my gang clear the city. Cut ties with the Emperor too while we're at it. The only boss I'm willing to die for is you, Chief. The man will say anything to save his own skin. I'll leave his judgment to you, Elaine. You're welcome amongst us, provided you swear to never treat our lives the same callous way you did your own. Sounds like my read on you was right, then. You got a kind soul under all that armor and formality. Anyway... Might be a hard sell with the way things turned out, but I know my way around a sword better than most. This bet'll come good, trust me. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you both for coming. I take it you are Prince Elaine, commander of the Liberation Army and rightful heir to Cornea's throne. Indeed I am. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, my king. I am no king. Merely Gilbert, for now. My coronation must wait until Castle Soldraga is ours once more. Prince Gilbert, then. I've word that you request our aid? Just so. Ever since my father's demise in the tragic campaign against Zenoira, I have devoted myself to but one cause. To gather what survivors clung to life and fight onward for the past, present, and future of Drakenholt. Yet, the battle which saw us win back Bomrate claimed many of our finest men, and morale has suffered accordingly. Hence, you seek reinforcements. Correct. It wounds my pride to admit it, but I would suffer any injury before I see my people suffer worse. We march to vanquish Galerius and free all nations of Fevrith alike. 
including Drakenhold. We will join you. <laughs> You've quite the grand vision for yourself, seeking to unify the entire continent. And yet that vision is the beacon which draws soldiers to your ranks and fuels your army's unceasing advance. Tis but a dream for now, one that will remain as such unless we can recapture your palace. Sorry to interrupt this little war council. I've got word from one of our scouts. What is it? Zenoira approaches the Colosseum, and they bring a battalion of some size with them. <sighs> How large, exactly? Bit over four times our head count, if memory serves me right. That's absurd! What shall we do, Prince Kelbert? Unfortunate as it may be, we lack the time necessary for any sort of elaborate preparation. We'll have to make do with what personnel we have. The catapults around our Colosseum walls will prove vital as well. And scant as our defenses are, it seems I have no choice but to sortie myself. We halt their advance together. Multiple enemy strongholds and a grim array of stationed weaponry. A fitting defense for a key strategic position. And there's one more thing, Princess. Go on then, out with it. The general charged with holding the Bastion is Geeth, Knight of the Feathered Crust. <laughs> a name I hoped to never hear again. He was among the first Lords of Cornea to defect when Valmor showed his true colors, Your Highness. He is a man of immense ambition, willing to cross any bridge, speak any word, or slay any foe in order to get what he wants. What's more, there are rumors in the fortress that he's to be sent back to Zenoira before long. Then perhaps we merely must wait until such events come to pass. Hey, I recognize that name. The Knights of the Rose died by his hand. I've heard the plan, Joseph. If you can even call it that. You intend to do nothing and bide our time until the General is shipped off. Just so, my lady. We strike after he's departed the fortress, before his successor has time to arrive. Ab sent a leader to marshal its defenses. Even the most ironclad of strongholds will fall to the chaos of war. Spineless old man. What will any of this accomplish if we let that monster slip through our fingers? Tell me, Joseph. Princess, please. I understand your anger towards Zenoira, but this seems to be far beyond that. What is your history with Geeth? I guess you wouldn't know. Ten years ago, he sought to prove his allegiance to Galerius through a sacrifice of royal blood. My blood. The Barbarian. Then the reason you fled to Drakenhold was to break free of his reach. Yes. I was meant to cross the border with my retinue, the Knights of the Rose. But it wasn't to be. I fear I can imagine how this story ends. They surrendered their lives so that mine could endure. Barred his path with their fallen corpses. I lost every last one of them. And now, as the only survivor of that slaughter, it falls on me to avenge their deaths. Geese's head will roll by my blade. Tis a painful memory indeed, my princess. Yet, in this harsh world, every skirmish could be our last, and any false move might risk the safety of our men. I assure you, should the opportunity arise, we shall see the general slain. I don't want your empty promises. I've waited an entire decade for this chance, and I'm not about to let it escape me. Your ladyship. Leia. I take it you heard all that. I did. I wasn't intending to pry, ma'am. I've lost my appetite for conversation. We can speak more on this tomorrow. I hope you can forgive my ignorance, Princess. That was the first I'd heard of such tragedy. That'll be the last you hear of it, too. 
It's an old story, and one that bears no meaning to Drakenholt. Even so, I must say, Sir Joseph's strategy is sound. We would be wise to accept it without dispute. <laughs> I've always admired your boldness, Leia. But this burden is mine to bear, and mine alone. Save your opinions for someone who will hear them. Now go get some rest. Battle will be upon us before long. Princess, wait! Making a martyr of yourself won't bring them back. <sighs> You're here to stop me too, then. Are you kidding? We just don't want to miss out on the action. We may not match your years in the Order, but we embody the Rose. Same as you. From the moment I joined as a fledgling squire, I vowed to be your shield in times of strife. That vow, that spirit stands unchanged even now. Please, my princess, you're not alone in hungering for vengeance. Let us join you. Together, we claim Geeth's head, and the honor of our order with it. You're right. I should never have considered doing this without you. We stand at the ready, my lady. Knights of the Rose, we march at once to avenge the atrocities inflicted on our fallen sisters. Yes, ma'am. Right. Gotcha. Coward. The man would rather hide away and hurl stones than face us with honor. I'm relieved to find you unharmed, my princess. Now, come. Flee this danger and return to our side. Joseph. I know the truth hidden behind those words. This selfish display of mine has thrown others squarely in harm's path. I admit, the battle has been more of a struggle than I anticipated. But no struggle is too great when compared to your safety. I was wrong, Joseph. In a fit of rage, I stood my most loyal subjects before the might of an entire army. And in so doing, almost repeated the very tragedy I seek to avenge. Hey, it's not your fault. We are ever ready to lay our lives down for you should the need arise. The Captain surely felt the same, all those years ago. Forgive me, friends. This is as far as we go on our own. Prepare to rally with Elaine and the others at once. You have my thanks, Princess. It is done. So it is. At long last, Geeth is consigned to the hell of history where he belongs. None will remember his name. And everyone we lost can finally rest easy. Justice was delivered this day. You can take things from here, Joseph. Princess. Listen up. I've decided to leave the Liberation. <laughs> that, and I hereby dissolve the Knights of the Rose. You're free to live however you see fit. What? But why? We did it, my lady. Geeth's gone. That's exactly it. I spoke to him before he met his end, and the man didn't even remember who we were. The corpses of those he murdered were nothing to him. Rid from his mind, you're the warmth had even left their bodies. All the while, I've been tortured by delusions of revenge. A damned slave to the past he had long since forgotten. Not only that, but I closed my ears to Joseph's plans, and in acting as I saw fit, put all of you in great danger. And now? I must answer for my wrongs. Please, my lady, don't belittle yourself. Virtue and justice play at the heart of your every action, as is proper for the paragon of Cornian royalty. 
<laughs> I'd think you were describing Elaine, not me. Apologies if this is out of line, your ladyship. But I have stood by your side for a number of years now, ever since you first stepped foot into Dragonhold. In that time, you have done what seemed impossible, restored pride to this land, and encouraged its people to reclaim their home. I doubt you fully understand just how monumental an accomplishment that is. In you, Prince Gilbert saw the progeny of a ruined land, holding her head ever high despite the many sorrows she'd confronted. That noble spirit stirred the dormant fire in his breast, emboldened him to take up his sword once more. Where has that spirit gone, I ask? I've always counted your pride as a member of the royal line to be among your greatest strengths. Yet were Prince Gilbert to see you now, he would surely view it as nothing but a weakness. I dare you to say that again. Princess, the people of Cornea aren't the only ones who look to you for hope. I know you want to bury your sword, but I ask that you don't bury the dreams of Drakenhold along with it. <sighs> Come on, Prince. Say something! I must add my own plea to the Roar, Virginia. In truth, there's still a great deal I've yet to learn. So many lessons left untaught the day I lost my mother. But that's precisely why I value having you beside me. To teach me the ways of Cornean royalty like no other can. I... I suppose I could stay on at least a little longer. Seeing how desperately you need me. Enough with your staring, all of you. Bashfulness doesn't suit me in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> merely reflecting on that fateful day. A wound of a different kind, then. Queen Elania surrendered herself to that monstrous blade, that the prince and I might escape it. Yet I can't help but wonder. Had I only faced Galerius in her stead, might my demise have spared her such a cruel fate? Perhaps she would be the one standing beneath this moonlit sky instead of me. She deserved to live, not I. It seems I too am slave to a past I cannot outrun. Both our hearts were scarred deep by what happened ten years ago. But that pain isn't ours alone. So many suffered that day, and so many suffer still. But there's still hope for peace. A lasting peace that can soothe the agony our people suffer. Elaine is that hope. The boy you saved, and the man you raised him to be. Take pride in that, Joseph. You grow more and more like Elenia with every setting sun. Flying true as an arrow, urged forth by the strongest conviction. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd go that far. Joseph, I can't be the mother Elaine has lacked all these years. But I can whip him into shape every now and again. <laughs> Let's hold that whip together, shall we? So that's where it came from. I've been thinking you looked a little more royal lately. <laughs> you mean that as a barb, I'm certain. Yet I shall take those words at face value. Thank you, Virginia. <sighs> You're no fun. So, what kind of mischief have you two been getting into over here? Nothing of much import. Merely reminiscing on my brother. Prince Ludwig, huh? The time is nearly upon us. Now come, we unite with Herman's company and reclaim Castle Soldraga.
You wished to speak with me? I did. I'm sorry to distract you before such a pivotal battle, but this needed to happen in private. That swordsman is none other than Prince Ludwig. You knew? <sighs> As did you, judging by your response. I... Uh... It matters not. Speak of the devil and he'll waltz right into your tent. It's good to see you again, Prince. So, I've been found out. I heard you'd gone missing, you know. Tragically lost since the war against Zenoira. Some mane you've grown in the meantime. I beg of you. Keep this matter a secret. You and Leia here are the only two who know my identity. And I would much prefer to keep it that way. Sorry, but secrecy isn't really my game. Elaine must know of this. Then he'll lose a capable sword in the process. Reveal the truth, and I am gone. <sighs> Fine, then. There's no point telling him if you're just going to disappear the second I do. I promise I won't speak a word of this. For now. But that all ends when we arrive at Soldraga. So be it. I will stand with the Liberation until that time comes. And, situation withstanding, I must admit, I'm glad I can still be there for Gilbert in his time of need. So that's how it is. As Gilbert mentioned back at the Colosseum, he plans to ascend the throne once we've retaken Soldraga. It's a burden he found the resolve to shoulder only when it was thrust upon him. When Ludwig went missing, that is. But if he learned his brother still lived? Well, the joy of their reunion might end up tinged with dismay. I know it all too well. For years, I had thought myself the sole survivor of the Cornian line, and worked tirelessly in that role. Then, how did you feel when you learned I was alive? To be frank, it was an equal helping of joy and envy. I admired Queen Elenia from the day I first laid eyes on her, and every ounce of my being is dedicated to restoring Cornia. But even I'm not brazen enough to challenge royal succession. You're the heir, no matter how much I might wish otherwise. Back to the topic at hand, though. You have to convince Aramis, convince Prince Ludwig to reconcile with Gilbert. Very well, then. I'll speak to him. <sighs> I can't thank you enough, Elaine. If Ludwig is going to listen to anyone, it's you.
I knew you'd ask me here. Well, I'll be taking that ring now. I... yes, of course. <laughs> Glad you know what's best for you. Honestly, I'd always believed I'd be queen someday. I thought it was inevitable, really. But that horrible day ten years passed. Well, I nearly lost hope entirely. It must have been awfully hard. I at least had Joseph to protect me, but you... You were all alone in this world. Deep down, I knew Cornea had fallen. I just didn't want to admit it. Still, there were nights I let myself drift into fantasy. Memories of my time with you and Aunt Elenia. Dreaming how one day I would reinstate the royal family to its rightful status. But it seems that's no longer a dream. Not anymore. With how far the liberation has come, Cornea's redemption is but a matter of course. Assuming I have you at my side, that is. I need you, Virginia. More than you could possibly know. Our covenant is sealed, then. You can come a bit closer, if you want. When we were young, I always thought of you as a brother. But you're so much more to me than that. Now come. Cornea awaits its new king. And queen. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! On your guard, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Shinoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Deluded cravens, the both of you! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sijil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! I don't know how, but she's perfectly fine. Speak to me, please.
I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Right. I'll crush Baltro and his sickening sigil myself. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? Loathsome scamp! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! is leaving me! You've ruined everything, a cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come again. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! Like I could ever say no to that. All of my research, 
lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> Oh, how far the mighty fall, our great General Berengaria rotting away in a cage. It's the least you deserve for double-crossing Zenoira. <laughs> Hilarious. You oppress a continent, devise cowardly schemes, and still have the gall to judge other people's morals. What schemes do you speak of? I'm not sure if you're playing dumb or just living the reality. I mean your plan to besiege Prince Gilbert in the Colosseum. Zenoira will shove out any street rat that fits into a uniform if it means keeping their failed defensive afloat. How terrifying. <laughs> we'll see how sharp that tongue of yours is once the executioners cut it from your skull. Go on and keep talking while you still can. Well, what do we have here? Looks like Travis's little lessons might actually come in handy. Hold a moment. I take it you're General Berengaria. And who's asking? I am Elaine, commander of the Cornea Liberation Army. Well, how about that? You've got the right of it. Berengaria is the name, but I'm no general anymore. Just a deserter on the run these days. And no enemy of yours, mind you. Welcome news. If you're willing, I'd count you among our allies as well. Come, help us topple Zenoira's wicked reign. Where are you? <sighs> He's bolder than I expected. Guess I wouldn't mind playing along for a bit. We've done it, Prince Elaine. Zenoira's grip on this land is no more. A feat only possible through your unceasing effort. Now, allow me to present a former general in their ranks. This is Berengaria. Uh, <sighs> I said it wouldn't be easy, but I guess this is you we're talking about. Ren! Travis, what in the devil's tale are you doing here? I should be asking you the same thing. Why is my own sister siding with Zenoira? Did you forget what those bastards did to our father? How they slaughtered him before our very eyes? Answer me! I... I can't. Not yet. But what about you, huh? I told you plain, I don't want you near me. Now go home and bury yourself in your beloved books, why don't you? Things have changed, Ren. I fight to sever the hand of tyranny, while you sit here feasting out of its palm. <sighs> That's not fair. You know it. I wasn't aware they were siblings. Not especially close ones, it would seem. I'd suggest you stay out of it, Leia. They say time heals all wounds. But a scar that deep <laughs> may take an entire lifetime. How 
hopes of slaying the prince have been well and truly foiled. And the blame lies squarely on your neck, Perintaria. This neck is yours to throttle no longer. And Zenoira's woes are sweet music to my ear. But not as sweet as your dying breath will be. Ren! Travis, what are you doing here? What impeccable timing. Enough of this little performance, General. Cut the boy down and return to my side. Is he telling the truth? Have you been working with them? I'd never. Not anymore. You've left yourself wide open, fool! Travis! <laughs> no! Such a simple woman you are. That you'd shield your dear brother was an all too predictable outcome. You are nothing. No threat to anyone now. If you won't obey my choice, force will have to suffice. Run! What is it? The rebels have breached our front line, ma'am. They march on the castle as we speak. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I would have been disappointed if they came all this way only to die at the gates. Yes, they'll prove a fine enough opponent. Ready the troops. I shall take the field myself. I'm sorry, Ren. This is all my fault. If anyone should be apologizing, it's me. All I ever wanted was to keep you safe. Pardon the interruption. Prince Gilbert. There can be no mistaking it. You are none other than the daughter of House Zexhelm. I am. And after my family's role in the uprising, I have no right to stand before you. There is no need to unearth what time has long buried. Though it does make this all the more difficult to comprehend. Why have you chosen to side with Zenoira? To get my hands on this armor here. A lost relic of their ancient empire. I needed strength. To take revenge for what they did to our family. And claiming their colors was the only way to get it. All of this was for father then? Yep. But I know you'd get roped in too if you learned the truth. So I lied, said all those awful things to get you to leave. I wanted to keep you as far from battle as I could. Ren. We've already lost so much, Travis. Our father, our mother. I wasn't about to lose you too. <laughs> then the answer is already at your fingertips. It is a bitter drink, being forsaken by an elder sibling. I'm glad to see you reunited. Now, I have matters of my own to attend to. I'll never abandon you again, Travis. I swear it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know? I wouldn't have it any other way. We fight shoulder to shoulder from now on. And Travis, I'm sorry. I forgive you.
No thanks. Uh, but I haven't even said anything yet. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. I knew it. And, uh, yeah. Not interested. Why not? I've heard the stories from Rosalinda. Breaking this oath comes at a heavy cost. And there's no guarantee I won't turn on you. Or you on me. Then we'll face those consequences together. We could live a hundred lives, and I would pick you every time. That's some risk you're taking. <sighs> if what they say about your unicorn and its tradition is true, this covenant represents the strongest bond imaginable. The sacred kind. Or severing it might just... cost your life. I'll bear any danger should it mean spending that life with you. Marry me, Berengaria. As stunning as you are now, you'll look even more so in the pure white of a wedding dress. <laughs> You're really something, you know that? But I'm not complaining. The answer's yes, by the way. I love you, now and always. And I hope you're ready to put up with me for the rest of your life. Your laughter, your tears, your pain. I'm here for all of it. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Careful, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Try it if you dare! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! It's okay, Elaine. She's still breathing. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. 
Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. Gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Today's the day Boltro dies. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Enough of your games! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
eternal gratitude on behalf of every Zenoiran soul to have ever lived. Thank you, Elaine, and farewell. Indeed. Is it such a crime to simply walk the streets? How was I meant to know we were to stay in our homes? I need you now more than ever, Hilda. You there. Who are you? Nobody more than a simple sellsword. Now, come. My patron demands your presence. Me? where we're going we should be clear of them by now you mean I'm saved but why let's merely say I have dues to settle with Zenoira there's no time for that now though run as fast and far as you can wait I Is she a friend of yours? My sister, actually. A fearless warrior who tears through the skies atop the most graceful wyvern you've ever seen. But despite all that, I can't help but worry about her. I can understand the feeling. Oh, where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Prim, a cleric in service of the Palavian Church. And I, a simple wanderer. You can call me... Aramis. Sir Aramis, then. Allow me to thank you again for retrieving me from that horrible place. Please, it was nothing worth such embellishment. Just... indulging a selfish urge to help those in need. Selfish? I can't imagine anything less. You and Hilda are quite alike, actually. Both pursuing a noble cause far beyond just yourselves. Oh, and you'll be joining the Liberation too, yes? We can make the trek back to camp together if you'd like. Apologies, but I think I'll stay here a moment. Is something wrong? If you need healing from the battle, I'd be more than glad to oblige. Thank you, but I'm alright. I'll be but a few footsteps behind. Very well, then. I'll be waiting for you. Do you make a habit of eavesdropping, or am I the lucky exception? Show yourself. And speak, if you've words for me.
Uh, Prim, is there a reason you've brought your staff with you? Is there a reason I wouldn't? I assume you've asked me here for some form of healing. Well, no, not exactly. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. What a lovely little ring! And in such a beautiful place, too. <laughs> it almost sounded like you were proposing for a second there. That was my intention, yes. Oh, how wonderful! I wish all the best to you and, uh... Me? Wait, me? There could be none other. Ever since you joined our cause, your skill as a cleric has saved countless lives. And by swearing an oath upon these rings, we can draw out... Uh, sorry, Elaine, uh, but, but do you mind if I gather my thoughts for a second? <clears throat> now, what were you saying again? I'm ready to hear it this time. Well... I was bade to give this ring to the person I care for most. And you were the first and only who crossed my mind. With every spark of healing magic I witness, it's as though a part of my own heart is restored as well. In time, I've come to realize just how much you mean to me. How I couldn't live without you at my side. Marry me, Prim. And together, we'll build a life more grand than we ever could have dreamed. I'm flattered that you think that highly of me. And so immensely happy, too. I would love nothing more than to be your bride, Elaine. I accept a hundred times over. I'll never forget this day, Prim. The day we embarked on a beautiful new journey. Together. <laughs> I just worry what my sister will say when she learns I got engaged before her. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Where is he getting such endless power? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Shinoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. You won't. Evil like yours can never defeat us. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? 
Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Her breathing is steady. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. I'm with you until the final blow is struck, Elaine. Let's shatter this cursed sigil together! Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Nothing we say will ever reach his ears. It seems force is our only option! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! My 
fails, it beckons. All of my knowledge, all of my research, lost to the endless emptiness of time. Who am I? Captain, it's Magellan. He says he's back to normal and, uh, well, he's here. What? Hey there, Liza. Hope I didn't make you worry too much. You've got some real guts showing your face around here. You got any idea the kind of damage you've dealt to our men? Not to mention our morale. I do, yeah. And I'm real sorry for that. But I wasn't doing it because I wanted to. Those Zenoira bastards were controlling my mind, and yanking me around like a damn puppet on a string. Sure they were. You ask me, it's all sounding a bit too convenient. And if you are telling the truth, what's to say you're not still under their control? You could be here to finish us off for all I know. Easy there. He's not bluffing, Liza. I swear by it. And I thought you were dead. Hmm. You don't look like a fake. Still as dashing as ever, right? Still a buffoon, more like. But I doubt that'll ever change. Fine. If Aubin sees fit to trust you, I'll just have to do the same. Not like we'd be able to fight back anyways. I can count the men I've got left on my damned fingers. How's that possible? I'm sure you remember Gloucester. How could I forget? Guy was the Black Knight of Dragonal. Prince Ludwig's personal card at that. Us Sandors would never survive without him helping us out. What happened to him? Same story as Magellan here. He just lost it one day. Started attacking people for no reason. And with all the raids going on, whole towns have started up and fleeing the desert entirely. A familiar tale. Yeah. Sounds like he fell for the same trick I did. Boss! Boss! What's wrong? It's Gloucester! He's coming this way! Must have caught wind of the Liberation showing up. Come on. We retreat west to the village, then strike from there. You plan to launch a counteroffensive? We're as good as buried if we don't. And the only way I'm willing to go down is swinging. Please, boss. That ring of yours can save him, I'm sure of it. I assure you, you needn't convince me. I won't allow this brutality to continue. Blaster! <clears throat> Do it, boss. Where... am I? Is he really back? He should be, yes. What have I done?
What's the big idea asking me here? Guy like you's probably got a hundred better choices. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Funny joke. I assure you, I couldn't be more serious. Get real. You know how much hell you'd catch going with a girl like me? I'm loud, I'm rude, and I'm such a desert kid, I got sand running through my veins. You can't possibly want my squalor dirty in the crown. Don't belittle yourself so. I couldn't imagine life without you by my side, Liza. And should anyone attempt to disparage your demeanor, they will have to answer to me. I promise you, I will do everything in my power to make our union as perfect as you could ever imagine. <sighs> I guess I could be convinced if you're that set on it. Fairer words have never crossed my ears. Mind if I ask you something, though? Just... don't forget about everyone suffering out in the desert. I could never. Those people are your family, Liza. And they will always have my protection. Guess it's settled, then. I'm yours. For the rest of forever. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Damn it! What's he planning now? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. <laughs> like we'd let you! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! She's breathing just fine, Elaine. Don't worry. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The is complete, and the 
gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long drawn war. Here and now. This guy's gonna pay for what he did to my people. To all of us. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Nah, not happening. Your sick games end here! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
Not another step, if you don't want it to be your last. Please, my family lives just a few houses over. If I'm going to die, I'd rather it be by their side than trapped like an infested bird in a cage. All of you, back to camp. And those who've come into town, well, you know what happens next. That's the last of the poor souls. Not a one slipped past us. The day will come when we look back at this, all of this, and feel we made the right decision. It has to, doesn't it? Another of your recruits, and from the same squadron, too. Most of them caught it on their way back to the encampment, or so I've heard. You had no choice, my lady. Don't touch the bodies. I'll have an Undertaker dispose of them as soon as I'm able. This foul disease has blighted our land for far too long. It may have ravaged half this town once before, but never again. No matter what that takes. Some claim this illness is actually a noxious gas exuded from the mouth of any who speaks poorly of Zenoira. Yet others seem to believe it's a curse placed on us by the savage beast folk of the Northern Reaches. Lunacy and hysteria. Every word. Round up anyone that espouses these theories and snap them out of it. Similar superstitions took hold when the outbreak first arose six years ago, bringing complete and utter chaos with them. But I won't let it happen again. We'll quash the rumors and keep hold of what precious order we can. How fare the health inspections? Not well, ma'am. Especially among the merchants. They take issue with our examining their wares at every border crossing. Then they're free to take issue straight to the local jail. I'm sure the guards will be more than happy to lend an ear. Oh, and be doubly thorough with anyone approaching from the south. The spread down there is nigh unchecked, or so I hear. Lady Hilda! The rebel army has been sighted in our vicinity, ma'am! As if one pounding headache weren't enough. Prepare for combat, men! We must defend this fragile order at all costs! So, you've returned. I have. Come with me, Prim. Away from this plague-ridden place. And forsake all those who suffer? They need the Balm of Faith, now more than ever. I knew you would say that. But what can your unicorn do for them exactly? All of us stand equal before the Maw of Pestilence. Kings will perish just the same as beggars and thieves. And Faith is but a bandit dressed upon a mortal wound. You saw what happened six years ago. How quickly this world can sink into turmoil without authority to guide it, without order. Stop talking for a second and listen, Hilda. I've been looking into the source of this plague and the people of the church actually found something. It was deep in the ruins not far from here. A vast array of poisons each one more deadly than the last. That, and a stockpile of arms bearing the Zenoiran crest. A valiant attempt to pin this on our benefactors. You should know better than to believe every whisper you hear on the wind. This isn't some backstreet rumor. Go and see for yourself if you don't believe me. Enough. Either you join me, or you leave. And should you aim to disrupt the order I fought so hard to maintain, I'll have to punish you just like all the rest. Wait, please! <sighs> I take it you're the leader of the rebels, then. Do with me as you will. But allow me to speak first, if I may. The matter is a grave one. 
Our ears are yours. If the people of this land flee for fear of violence, the disease that has tormented us without rest will spread elsewhere. I suggest you inform them they will not come to harm and seal the trade routes in and out of the territory at once. The casualties of this scourge pile high indeed, my prince. Yes, Zenoira has gouged deeper scars than I expected. Chloe, do as she's asked. Of course, Your Majesty. Hey, wait for me! You speak with a liar's tongue, Prince. This talk of scars will only sow worry and hatred. If I may, madam. Six years past, Zenoira's conquest was halted at this very spot. Try as they could, there was no breaching Dragonhold's defenses. How then, nigh five moons later, did their forces grasp victory from the cold clutches of defeat? The onset of the plague, of course. The affliction has spread its tendrils far and wide, always arriving but a moment ahead of Zenoira's advance. It's far too convenient to be coincidence. As if I'd be swayed by such ludicrous tales. We've spoken long enough. If you plan to cut me down, I'd prefer you just get on with it. Hilda. There's no foe more troubling than a skilled leader who commands the loyalty of her men. Were you to fight us till your dying breath, those who champion you would surely do the same. The Liberation can ill afford keeping such an enemy. But we would gladly count you as an ally instead. You would count me a traitor. Whatever your claimed grievances with Zenoira, my trident stands ever loyal in her service. After all, I could never hope to preserve order in my ranks if I changed course with every shifting wind. Then you leave me little choice. I shall see you relieved of that trident and retained under our supervision until the disease is driven back once and for all. So be it. Now come. There'll be no point in barring the roads if we don't do it quickly. Is there something I can help you with, Hilda? I... wanted to thank you... for seeing my wyvern back safely. Of course. We'd been looking after it as best we were able, but I was told the worm would heed none but you. He is as blindly loyal as I am, yes. Prim. It was all there, just as you said. Proof of their foul experiments, buried in the darkest depths of those ruins. Everything's grown quite clear to me now. Zenoira has wrought this misery upon our land. Thank you for trusting me, Hilda. And you, say you win, and cast off the chains that bind this land. What next? What becomes of Drakenhold? We fight on. Not only for the sake of this kingdom, but for lasting order that rings out across Fevrith. Order, hmm. That reminds me, that army of yours is little more than a disheveled tangle of limbs. You'll need far more agile battalions if you'll have any hope of overcoming Zenoira's might. Maybe you can start with one led by a talented worm rider. If such a rider is offering to join, we would be lucky to have her. You'll make a fine addition, Hilda. I suppose I could be persuaded then. <laughs> <laughs>
I heard mutterings around camp about the Rite of Covenant. Is that why you've called me here? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. You seem quite set on it. I am. In our time together, I've come to know you as a kind man, well deserving of his soldiers' trust and loyalty. But you're still much too naive. That innocence will see your head roll someday, especially if you mean to rule a kingdom. Which is why I would ask you this. You've spoken time and again of your wish to restore order to this land. But are you prepared to deal with the consequences of doing so? To make decisions that will govern the life and death of your people? Indeed I am. Though, I've made a promise to myself. Which is? I will never let the luster of the crown wash away my humanity. Those who forget the very citizens they claim to serve are unfit to lead and unfit to rule. Call it naive if you wish, but that is the principle with which I hope to restore Cornea. A belief that will neither bend nor break. There's the Elaine I know. But you've changed too. Those eyes burn with the fire of true conviction, just like you say. And a fire I can't help but gaze deeper into. I'll support you however I'm able. Both in leadership and in life. I'd like nothing more, Hilda. That's that, then. You may have much yet to learn, Elaine. Hmm? But being a warm, gentle soul isn't one of those things. Never lose that. With you at my side, I never could. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Keep your guard raised, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Shinoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. It won't be half as simple as you think it. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Mm. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Mother! 
is surely some manner of miracle, but the Queen still breathes. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. This infernal chapter in Feverth's history shall finally come to a fitting close. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? There's no reasoning with a man so given over to delusion. Prepare to be freed from its hand! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Me. You fool everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The siege of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's golden grace. <laughs> Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! I'm ready. Let's 
he beckons. All of my knowledge, all of my research, lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> Most of it cleared out. Uh... Liza? What are you doing here? Oh, you know... Just making a bit of pocket change is all. Please don't tell the others. I wouldn't dream of it. Assuming this shop of yours is legitimate, that is. What kind of merchant do you take me for? It's all just trinkets and stuff that picked up in the ruins. But if Magellan or the gang knew about this, I'd never hear the end of it. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> don't worry. I'm good at keeping secrets. Mind if I take a look? Eh, be my guest. Though I don't have much worth buying. This one here is gorgeous. Oh, that old thing? I'll let you have it on the cheap if you want. End of day sale. Really? It'll just run you five mil, that's all. That's a bit beyond my budget. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Cute girl comes walking into my stall and I just can't help myself. I was actually looking to offload the whole set. Go on and take him, free of charge. Whoa. What is it? Behind you. She's huge. Oh! You two ever hear of manners? <laughs> well, I'll take that over the usual. Most people split the second they see me coming. Can I help you with something? Sure can. See, I'm new in town, looking for the Colosseum. But everyone I ask goes all wide-eyed and runs off. There is a Colosseum here, yeah? There is, but I believe they've put competitions on hold until matters in the region improve. <laughs> I hear the Prince is always out for spare steel, though. Why not try there if you're looking for work? I'm not looking. Prince might not be a bad idea, though. I'll see what I can squeeze out of him. Oh, and thanks. What a woman. Prince Gilbert, there you are. Ah, Leia. I was merely reminiscing for a moment. It feels scarcely appropriate to say, given the situation we find ourselves in. But I find it difficult to believe we prepare to fight arm in arm with the corny and royal family. I understand the emotion, your highness. After all, our kingdoms were locked in fierce rivalry for what seemed like centuries. When Cornea fell to Galerius, my father hailed it as a precursor to our long-awaited ascendance. And the only reason he granted Virginia asylum was so that he could marry her off to my brother Ludwig. All part of some grand scheme to annex Cornea after he'd thwarted Zenoira. But we both know how the war effort went. My father lost his life in the battle, and Ludwig remains missing even now. <sighs> Ascendance indeed. Your Highness, I... 
What? Is that it? Things were just getting good. Behind me. Identify yourself this instant! Name's Amalia. You wanna try me, girl? Cause I've been itching for a fight all day long. Too easy. Can you stand, Leia? I'm not finished yet. Amalia, was it? State your purpose here. Easy. I'm not gonna eat you. I heard there's a Colosseum here. Fancy old place where all the strongest warriors can test themselves. Was hoping you'd open it back up again. I can do that. Under one condition. A legion of Xenoiran soldiers descends on this city as we speak. Should you join the battle to defend it, and should we emerge with our lives, I would be more than glad to reopen the Colosseum. Deal. Just now, I'm gonna hold you to it. Truly a stunning victory, my fellow Prince. And it could never have been possible without your timely aid. Tales of your Liberation Army shall echo through a freed Fevrith for generations to come. I'm certain of it. A word, Gilbert. Thank you for everything. I plan to leave Drakenhold and accompany Elaine on his quest to crush Zenoira. I won't be needing your protection anymore. I have no objections. Though I imagine he may. You seem all too likely to give our fine prince here an unceasing migraine. Nonsense! I soothe his worries, not inflict them. Ah, I see how it is. You're just nervous you'll get lonely in my absence. Go on, you can admit it. <laughs> you never cease to amaze me. As for you, Leia, I'd like you to lend your sword to their cause as well. Are you certain, Your Highness? How else would I be sure Virginia is behaving? Go. Look after her for me. <sighs> I'll allow it. And you, Gilbert? What will you do now? I shall move to bolster our ranks and sharpen our blades for the impending siege of Castle Soldraga. We dealt Zenoira a heavy blow this day. Yet it was merely one cobble on the much larger path toward Drakenhold's revival. The greatest battle lies still ahead. And we have much to prepare before it arrives. Then we'll meet again ere our siege of Soldraga. Indeed. In the meantime, I shall await you at Fort Shusa, to the southwest of the castle. Sorry to butt in, little prince. I think you're forgetting something. Ah, yes, the reopening of the Colosseum. Forgive me the query, Lady Amalia, but you carry the strength of an entire company of knights solely on your shoulders. Do you not intend to put that to use for the sake of this nation? Mm, not really, no. Perhaps a better question is, why do you so strongly wish to see the Colosseum renewed? Well, it's kind of embarrassing to actually say it. But thinking about the fighters it'll bring, about the battles and the bloodshed and the brutality, it sets my mind racing. You seek a test of strength, then? Yeah, that's not it. Hmm? Huh? Well... You doing it or not? I've no intention of going back on my word. The Colosseum's doors will open once more. Good kid. And hey, if you want me that bad, you know where to find me. Beat me in a fight, and I'm all yours. Sure you can afford to be wasting time here? It's no waste. You said you would join our contingent once I defeat you. And that's precisely what I'm going to do. <laughs> Confident little guy. I like that. Fight your way up the ranks, then. I want to see just how far that confidence takes you. Well, look who went and made it to the top. <laughs> Never had a doubt in my mind. Indeed. And once I've claimed the title for my own, you'll be joining the Liberation, as promised. 
<laughs> I might actually have to work for once. Haven't had a thrill like this in years. Now come on, it's time. Ah, a foe capable of challenging the girl has finally arisen. Far though she may stand from true strength, she has trained many moons for this day. <laughs> Long have I awaited one worthy of wetting my blade with their blood. Here you shall witness the pinnacle of swordsmanship and perish in its wake! <laughs> splendid! Truly splendid! For years, my steel has sought perfection, and now it knows the bitter torment of defeat. At long last, the consummate blade is upon us! The legions of hell will be next to taste its edge! <sighs> Thanks. Feels good to finally move again. <sighs> Whole body screaming in pain, though. Damned spirit has no respect. <laughs> but he's gone now, thanks to you. Burning in eternal flames like he deserves. Would you care to explain? You were almost a different person entirely for a time there. <sighs> Not the prettiest story, but sure. He was an ancestor of mine. One of the finest swordsmen in the land in his day. Still is, by my count. It all went to his head, though. He searched for years for someone to pass his mastery down to, but nobody could handle it. So, he started spreading his seed instead, hoping someone would bear him a worthy son. But a cruel man makes a cruel father. He put his kids through such brutal training, most of them died in the process. Not that he cared. He kept making heirs to replace the fallen, and tossed aside any woman whose blood was too weak. They say some of those mothers even went mad from the grief. How horrible. But those women weren't going down without a fight gave their lives to curse the man for the rest of time. Wasn't long before his lungs started failing him, and no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't sire the son he so badly wanted. Sounds like he was staring death in the face. Maybe, but the old bastard wasn't kicking the bucket before he tried one last thing. Some kind of unholy sorcery that let him inhabit the bodies of his descendants, keep perfecting his sword work through their eyes. Something akin to Zenoira's magics, perhaps? Hmm? Couldn't say. But I know one thing for sure. He wasn't from Fevreth. And now? You put him and his damn curse to rest for good. Don't know how I can ever pay that back, but I'm gonna try. Let me come with you. Are you certain? That was the promise, wasn't it? Besides, I already got what I wanted out of this place. Guys tough as you will have no trouble putting me to work. We'll more than welcome it, Amalia. Oh, but there's one little thing I should warn you about. Which is? Well, just look at me. Woman my size eats as much as five men. I hope that's not a problem. <laughs> Sounds like I'll be on double cooking duty then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
What is it, Prince? You're gonna get a girl's hopes up asking her to a place like this. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. It's a cute little thing, isn't it? <laughs> Wonder if it'll even fit on my finger. Does that mean you accept? Under one condition. And I think you know what that's gonna be. A test of might. That explains why you asked me to bring a sword. And should I win, I get to request anything I wish. That was the bargain, yes? Yep. Doesn't matter if it's a ring or a rejection. I'll take whatever you've got. Very well, then. I'll have to show you how I feel through martial prowess. Let's see it! <laughs> Seems I've won. Sure does. Whew. That was great. Just what I'd expect from a man looking to be my partner. I'll take that ring now. Might not fit on my finger, but I can wear it around my neck no problem. Thank you, Amalia. It's nothing. You know, you're the strongest man I've ever met. Strong enough to dethrone the champ. So you better not go giving that crown to anyone else. At least, not if you want me sticking around. For you, I'll fell any foe. I promise you that, and so much more. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Stay strong, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Like we'd roll over for you! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Tree. 
traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! <laughs> She's still alive. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. Gate to the beyond stands open and true. <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse, spectral phantoms from an ancient time. You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength. Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. And giving Baltro the sword's the only way we're gonna do it. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing fabric beneath its heel, perhaps? Come on, Elaine. Let's show this guy who he's up against. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Leaving me! You've ruined everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. The 
let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls. Thought you'd never ask. Given where the militia is positioned, I propose we employ a two-pronged strategy. A pincer, if you will. I tend to agree, as long as we're careful. If one arm reaches too far ahead of the other, it's liable to have its fingers chopped off. The geysers scattered across the region are another topic to take note of. There's no knowing when one might erupt beneath us. Your Majesty. Apologies for the interruption, but I come with urgent news. The militia grew impatient and went on ahead. They were surrounded before they even reached Fruth. <sighs> this, in the very moment we depended on them. From what I can gather, they weren't too thrilled with the idea of taking help from Cornea. If only they had sense to match their pride. Sending reinforcements will be a dangerous proposition, Your Highness. The militia will fall in but a matter of time. All the same, we can't abandon them to their fates. Not after I'm the one who proposed this operation. I know that you're worried for your friends, Leia. I truly do. But that doesn't make rescuing them any safer. At least let me send someone. Even if it has to be me alone, I'll do it. I'm sorry. The risk is too great. But I can slip past them unnoticed. I swear upon my very life. Joseph, send a scouting party out at once. We prepare to march in the meantime. Very well, Your Highness. Prince. Your knowledge of the land will be invaluable to us, Leia. I ask that you be our guide in the battle ahead. As you command. The Fruth Militia has saved my prince, and it is entirely thanks to you. You have my undying gratitude. I'm sorry, my lord. We should never have charged ahead like that. Focus your energy on the wounded, not needless apologies. There will be time to discuss our next moves after. Of course, my lord. And thank you. Your skill in commanding an army is unmatched, my prince. <laughs> Such skill would be nothing without the finest blades to back it up. Bad news, Elaine. We got more enemies holed up in a storehouse by the docks. We must have overlooked them during our rounds of the harbor. They used to be Dragonhold soldiers from the looks of it. Knew their way around here well enough to slip clean by us. And now they're camped out in there, flat out refusing to surrender. What do you want to do? I'll handle this. No. 
Leia. Persuade these dissidents to lay down their arms. Uh, are you certain, sir? I wager they would sooner trust a fellow citizen of Dragonhold before one of our ranks. Not to mention that Virginia is more likely to elicit a declaration of war than a timely surrender. I'll show you war. But the point stands rightly made. Tell them their lives will be spared should they only agree to relinquish their blades. I promise it on my royal name. I will see it done. Then let's get over there already. Come on, Leia. Apologies for keeping you waiting, my prince. Is there something I can help you with? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. In truth, I had believed it's some grave error that I found myself asked here. How could I possibly be worthy of such an honor? Hold your gaze high, Leia. We've spent many a sleepless night of late locked in gripping conversation. And while time may slip through our fingers like so many grains of sand, some thoughts never fade from my mind. How dedicated and kind you are. How true to yourself. How utterly stunning in every way. I'm not sure how to respond. I never had anything growing up. 
not until Gilbert and his late father gave me a home to call my own. Yet amid the long, silent nights in their cold castle walls, I couldn't help but wonder. Why was I brought into this world, only to be abandoned in the nascent days of my infancy? Leia. But every minute with you has been brimming with warmth, life, love. And for the first time in all my years, I've realized my purpose on this earth. I want to protect the kingdom of those who welcomed me as family when I had none. That, and I want to do so beside the first man who's ever made me feel loved as I truly am. I've waited my entire life for this moment, and I wouldn't dare let it slip away. My answer is yes, Elaine. You'll never be alone again, for as long as I live. I shall be with you, always. And I thank you for your courage. I'm thrilled to hear it. And should sleep ever elude you, I'd be more than happy to while the night away in loving conversation. I can't wait. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. Earn this. Now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How is this possible? The beast should be vanquished, not standing strong as ever! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. You'll do no such thing. We shall defeat you here, and the heavens will pass judgment on your sins. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! It's all right, Elaine. Her life is in no danger. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. complete, and 
the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Our lands, our homes will suffer as infernal schemes no longer. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the king to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? As fuel for my magic, most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? Foul beast who preys on the lives of others! Prepare to meet your end! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
just past this thicket ahead, and we'll have made it through. My thanks, Yana. We would have wandered this wood for weeks without your aid. Come, we should hurry. Oh. Lady Rosalinda? What are you doing here by yourself? You've arrived with some timing, Sarimet Yana. I was actually hoping to entreat your aid. An acquaintance of yours, I presume? This is Lady Rosalinda. Elder sister to the Turanos of the Elves, the Seer Altalinda. And the boy is? Prince Elaine, heir to Cornea's throne and commander of their Liberation Army. Elaine, then. I see. Why have you come to Elheim? To breathe life into a revelation I was granted in Cornea's sanctuary. I was bade to meet with your Turanos. Then I fear your travels are in vain. Altalinda is captive, held prisoner in Castle Lowerhall ever since our defeat at Zenoira's Blade. Our people have fought for moons unending in order to win back her freedom. But our forces dwindle with every passing day. We will never succeed without help. Which is why you came looking for me. If I may, how was Zenoira able to breach the confounding defenses of the Winding Wood? By the hand of Sarimet Alsina. Uh, that can't be. Alsina was a sorceress of great renown, and my esteemed master in the art of spellcraft. She was a trusted advisor to your grandfather, King Gerard, of two generations past. A faithful ally to the Crown, then. She must surely be under Zenoira's control to have turned against us so. Now, you seek the Tudinos. While I seek an army. Two notes in the same melody. What say we sing this hymn together? You'd truly be willing to join us? We march to vanquish Galerius and free all nations of Fevrith alike. Should you truly extend such a generous offer, we would gladly accept it. Come, I'll introduce you to the others. <laughs> You're a bigger dreamer than you look. Thank you, Elaine. I'd like that very much. Linilago, sir! Terra Rosalinda approaches with an envoy of soldiers. Uh, by the stars! My lady! Calm yourself, please. I'm perfectly unharmed. Uh, oh, Anita. Oh, you're here as well, Sodomet. It's been a while, Lin. It has been far too long indeed. My lady, I wouldn't dare pass off willing reinforcements, but the state of affairs remains dire. We must withdraw. The enemy is but a teal away. Nothing is decided until the final blow is struck. And you are? My name is Elaine, commander of the Cornian Liberation. We've come to aid your resistance at Rosalinda's request. And I am Linolagos, of said resistance. Firm as your voice may ring, our defeat is unavoidable. Few able soldiers remain in this hold, and fewer still are willing to fight. Then allow me to reframe the matter. My army will push forth to the enemy stronghold. All I ask of you is to cover our rear. <laughs> you would charge ahead knowing well the severity of our struggles? It is a bold proclamation, sir. But not one I'm willing to overlook. Even if we fall in the process, our arrows will find peace in Zenoira next. I assure you of that. Avarian Teras. I've put you through more trouble than I'm worth. Sir Athelion! And I'm sorry for making you worry, Alina. None of that, please. I'm just glad you're back in one piece. As am I. As you can see, they barely even put a scratch in my armor. Thank the heavens, yes. Pardon me, Lady Rosalinda, but what would you have us do now? The Liberation Army fights for justice not only for Cornea, but for all subjugated lands of Fevereth. And so, we will repay the blood they've spilt in our name by joining them in their cause. 
As you command. We are most grateful for the support. I assure you, such bravery will not go unrewarded. Yet I must say, a human settlement is one of the last things I was expecting to find in Elheim. They sought refuge here when your kingdom first fell. <sighs> Though, of course, we could only offer them the briefest respite before we too were overrun. And you, Ethelion, what do you plan to do now? As long as your star shines for the liberation, Teras, mine too shall shine with it. Assuming you'll take me. There would be no greater honor. If I may, Sir Athelion, once the Noira is defeated and the war is won, will you return to this town? To me? You've shown me greater kindness than I ever thought possible. But there is no foe more terrible than the one we face now. I won't make a promise I may not be able to keep. Yes, of course. Know then that I'll be praying for your safety, just as I always have and just as I always will. Thank you, Elena. And may life treat you better than I have. Is she restored? I believe so, yes. I'm sorry, Eltalinda. I never wanted to hurt you. So, Baltro's spell can be broken, hmm? Who goes there? Show yourself! <clears throat> I'm right here, boy. What is the meaning of this? Master! Yana, it's been years. On your guard, Elaine. I learned everything I know from this woman. The sorceress Alcina. The very person who helped Zenoira conquer our lands. So it was you? <laughs> oh, poor little Elaine. You've come to resemble him so dearly. It's you in there, isn't it? The real you. Not one of Zenoira's puppets. Which means it was you controlling Eltalinda. <laughs> you misunderstand, child. Our magic does not simply make marionettes of its victims. Then what does it do? My sister would never have conspired with Zenoira by her own free will. And why should I answer that exactly? We'll make you answer. <laughs> Sheltering myself in the girl's body took more than its fair share of magic. It seems this is where I make my exit. Farewell for now. But don't worry, Elaine. We'll meet again soon enough. You have my utmost gratitude, Prince. And my humble apologies as well. I have to thank you too, Elaine. I'd never have seen Eltalinda again if not for your help. I'm just happy to see you both reunited. As for that apology, you needn't blame yourself for what happened. Alcina's magics made you an unwilling captive. There lies no fault in that. Your kindness knows no bounds. And it heartens me to see you safe and sound, Yonisa. I owe my health to Elaine here just as much as you do. All because of a revelation he had that told him to come find you. Me? Indeed. At the urging of a self-named great sage within a sanctuary in Cornea. He claimed that in order to defeat Galerius, I must meet with the Turdenos of Elheim and unbind the Ring of the Unicorn. If you know anything about how such a feat may be accomplished, I beg you, tell me. I understand now what you're after. But I fear I lack the knowledge you seek. Though I have laid eyes on some old texts that spoke of your ring. And where can I find such texts? In the Nasthirion, the Tower of Thorns in your language. It houses an archive only I may enter. 
within which lie histories that predate the founding of our nation, as well as records of arcane rituals and magics. I can recall a treatise regarding the unicorn being mentioned in one such record. The spire stands to the west of this castle, and is a site most sacred to dark elves like me. But unfortunately, it now rests in Zenoiran hands. Then we make for it at once, and reclaim it for the good of Elheim. Provided we're able to do so, would you be willing to grant me access to those texts you mentioned? But of course, Prince. I will aid you however I'm able. Apologies for the interruption, but the sun has nearly made its nest over the horizon. I bid you stay the night. I'll ready your beds. Much appreciated. We'll do just that. Oh, Rylanor, I'm glad to see you alive and well. Hmm? Well, well, Teras. And who's that behind you there? This is Elaine, from Cornea's Liberation Army. I only stand here now thanks to their aid. <laughs> what a wonderful stroke of luck. What's gotten into you? These verdant streets are a web you've walked straight into, and I, the spider at its heart. We have to get out of here, now. To me, men! This day is the last we'll ever suffer these flies and their ceaseless buzzing. Let not a one leave alive. Forgive me for what I've done. I've allowed myself to be bridled like a horse on a cart, and placed my countrymen in grave danger. But more than that, I swung my blade at the very woman I swore my life to protect. Stand, Rylanor. You've groveled long enough. There's no such thing. How else am I to atone for this failure? You have done nothing which demands atonement. It was only due to your devout loyalty that Zenora saw reason to control you. And consider what future might have befallen us had you not helped me flee to the Winding Wood. For one, I would never have enlisted the aid of the Liberation. Nor would we have rescued my beloved Venisa from Zenora's foul clutches. If anything, I should have come to your side sooner. I hope you can forgive me that misstep. How could you say such things? And yet, your kindness only makes my flame for you burn brighter. I pledge my life to you anew, should you only accept it. We've scoured the city, Taras. All of her people are safe. It would seem even the great Zenoiran army found themselves entangled in these labyrinthian tunnels. Thank you both. It puts my heart at ease knowing our home is unharmed. It's funny. In this moment, I'm reminded of the day you two first swore the oath as my personal guard. Rylanor, as much as I'd like to claim the honor for myself, you were the first to see Ethelion's potential for excellence. Even amidst a golden generation such as ours, his star shone brighter than any other. It was obvious he would serve you well. With a bit of training, of course. Yes. I remember when you first introduced him to me. The poor child was too nervous to even speak a word. <laughs> That was years ago, I'll have you note. <laughs> and now you stand a proud and mighty warrior. Rylanor's eye is keener than I give her credit for. But enough of the past. The Nasthidion awaits, and at its apex, Alcina. She is a sorceress mighty enough to see past the trickery of the Fae and slip into Elheim under her own power. You are not to drop your guards at any moment. Yes, yes my, my lady. lady. We'll begin the preparations at once. Come, Ethelion.
I've never seen such an incredible city before. The Dark Elves call this place home, you say? It is also the seat of my Unisa's power. Let it serve as the headquarters for this campaign as well. I thank you. But... Do you harbor no reservations about letting foreigners walk its halls? Humans at that. The Liberation has been most generous with its aid, and will be needing more still in the battle to come. But it's nearly upon us. Today, we defeat that wretched Alcina and reclaim the Nastidion in Elheim's name. Your treachery ends here, Alcina. Tell me, Master. Why have you aligned yourself with Zenoira? I doubt you'll believe what I have to say. I used to wield my magics for Cornea, same as you. And in her time of need, I rushed to Elenia's aid. I could do no different for His Majesty's daughter. But everything changed when I witnessed the magic they bore. The power to restore the dead. You see, all that I did was for King Gerard. <laughs> Leave our pursuers to me, my leash. As long as you live on, that is enough. Nonsense. I refuse to flee if it means renouncing you in the process. Watch out! Ah! Gerard! Pay for that! <laughs> No! Poison! Such dire tragedy, leaving his young Elenia alone in this world. I never expected the Sacred Blade of Cornea to fall so pitifully. The Prior King and his wife are furious from what I've heard. That witch always was His Majesty's favorite. It's the only reason she kept her job. But there are countless others ready to rise from academies and take her place. I doubt she'll have a single friend in this world ere long. And so, I intended to use Zenoira's magic to impart his soul into Elaine's body. I even kept Galerius far from Palavian shores in order to see His Majesty's vessel live on. All of it. For him. You can't really believe he'd be happy, being revived under such circumstances. No, it was a fool's errand, as you say. But I would bear even the harshest reprimand, if it meant hearing his voice just one more time speak with him again, even for a moment. Rest well, Master. Prince Elaine, I must thank you, on behalf of the entire elven race. Had you and your company not come to these lands, we would surely be languishing beneath Zenoira's iron fist even now. The war we fight is not for Cornea alone. And victory is but a distant dream until all who suffer under Zenoira's tyranny rise in song as one. Yet even were that not the case, we would come to your defense every time. Elaine. Ah, yes. Have you found any texts bearing mention of the Ring of the Unicorn? We have. However... Allow me. The room that housed them was ransacked, set ablaze by the look of it. The ancient tomes were badly burned. <sighs> but be at ease. The passages we need were still legible. The Ring of the Unicorn will be restored to its true strength only once the Rite of Covenant has been performed. And is this rite described anywhere? It is. According to the texts, all you have to do is go to the altar and offer up the Ring of the Maiden to a chosen companion. Not sure that's a ring we've got. 
Indeed. It is a treasure passed down through generations by the Turinas of Elheim. And now, I'd like you to have it. Are you certain you wish to part with such a precious artifact? Beyond certain. This ring is the only chance we have of stopping Galerius. It wouldn't do to keep that to ourselves, now would it? Huh. Guess that's everything. All we gotta do now is head to that altar and have ourselves a ritual. Yes, but its location is sadly lost to us. Trapped behind burnt words and cindered pages. <sighs> of course it is. Should have known it wouldn't be easy. Not like we've got a choice, though. Come on, Elaine. Let's get to hunting. Hold just a moment. We wish to accompany you and join the battle for a free Thevrith. In truth, we owe you an immeasurable debt after everything you've done for our people. And while this can't truly be considered fair repayment, I ask that you let us aid you as best we can. Elheim will never be safe, as long as Zenoira exists. We know that all too well now. Ten years ago, we turned a blind eye to their designs in order to preserve our peace. And that very peace was the price we paid. We won't make that mistake again. Not this time. With resolve that strong, we would be mad to refuse. You're always welcome amongst our ranks. Glad to make it official. Now come on, we've got places to be. Is something the matter? I look forward to our time together, Prince.
This is it. The same altar I saw in our texts. The ring, Elaine. Looks like I was right. What do I do next? Come back here with the person you've chosen for the right. Offer them the Ring of the Maiden, and you're done. That is, if they accept. Doing so should unleash the power stored deep within your own ring. But... Is there more? The covenant between Unicorn and Maiden requires both sides to be of one mind and one heart. If either betrayed the pact they swear at this altar, they would face terrible consequences. At least, according to the texts. I'll have to keep that in mind. You're a little close, Rosalinda. <laughs> Is there someone you're thinking of asking? Considering the risk, I'd suggest you give the ring to the person you trust most. Or the elf. Could you perhaps stand back a bit? <laughs> I see someone's made up his mind. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. You realize accepting would make me the Queen of Cornea, yes? Naturally. And what? Is that all you have to say? Tell me how you truly feel, Elaine. I love you, Rosalinda, from the very bottom of my heart. And I want nothing more than to spend the rest of my days at your side. Well, that's more like it. I'm ready. This... This is the happiest day of my life. I might not have been chosen as Turdenos, but to be chosen by you is all the greater. Just now I'll be awfully furious if you go dying before me. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a demand I can meet. Elves live for far longer than mere humans, after all. Then I suppose Cornea will have to get used to my solitary reign. Well... If it means ruling beside you, perhaps I could try holding on just a bit more. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira! Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this... now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Don't drop your guard, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength. Their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know a defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. 
Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. You're welcome to try, but I promise it won't be as easy as you might think. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the Sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Don't worry. She's stable. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. I'll be with you arm in arm through every breath of it. Come home, both of you. I still feast on the souls of Zenoira. I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? If it's a monster you're after, just look in a mirror! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Oh! Their strength is leaving me! You've ruined everything, a cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. The city's very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. The 
This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! <laughs> the only sin within you, Vulture, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come again. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! Gladly. I'm sorry for stopping you like this, but there was no one else I could turn to. What seems to be the matter? <laughs> what in the... Hello there. Remember me? Would that I could forget, Black Talon scum. Do you two know these people, Gamel? Had a bit of a run-in, yeah. Back in the thick of our thieving days. The world was slipping through my fingers, but the prince here gave me a chance to start fresh. You're a man reformed, then. <laughs> yep, and it's all thanks to you. Anyway, Celeste here needs your help. Go on, tell him what's what. Oh, right, of course. Southeast of here lies a small, pristine town called Kilkuka. Well, it was pristine until the elves living there were taken captive by a band of brigands known as the Black Talons. Is this some kind of joke? The leaders of the Black Talons are standing right next to you. <sighs> you got hearing problems, pal. I'm through with all that. Clean as a wiped cow. That, and I owe Celestia a big old debt. So I joined the militia, same as her. What he said. We figured we'd try our hand at doing good for once. Seems that's the truth. It raises a question, though. How exactly have the Black Talons come to Elheim? With Zenoira, if the rumors are true. And from what I've heard, they've started rounding up elves to sell back to the army that's hired them. Vile trade, but that's how the world is. Trafficking elves is a quick route to all the gold a guy could dream of. We don't step in, and the bastards will snatch them up and sell them off like they were nothing. Please, Fair Knights. Who knows what horrible fates await these people if we don't help them? Indeed. We depart at once. What of the captives? All safe, thanks to you. Lucky for us, the guy wouldn't be much of a slave trader if he was out roughing up his own goods. To hell with all of you. Mind if I snag a sec alone with him? I still go way back, so... Wanna have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. Do you approve, Celeste? 
I do. A man as kind as Gamal will surely get through to him. Very well, then. I trust your judgment. Appreciate it, Billy. <laughs> you always did have a knack for pulling wool over people's eyes. Now come on. We gotta move before they realize. No. Sorry, Cesar, but I left all that behind me. Nobody's setting your slave and mug free today. But don't worry. I'll make it nice and painless for you. Stop! At least, that was the plan. But my mind's all changed like now. You see, Elaine gave me a chance to turn my life around. To start walking towards the light instead of hiding in the shadow. Everyone deserves that chance in my book. Long as you keep living, you can always turn things around. Start fresh. But remember, if I ever catch you doing this low-life work again, you know what'll happen. One more step out of line, and it damn well would have happened to me, too. Take care of yourself out there, Captain. What's become of him, Gamal? He got away. Bastard slipperier than a damn eel. Really put my heart in trying to get him to see reason, too. But, hey, some people never listen. And that's all I got. Think you had something to ask the boss here, too? Ah, uh, right. I almost forgot. Elaine, sir. If it wouldn't be too much bother, would you mind granting me a position in your army? Not at all. I'd welcome it, in fact. Oh, thank the father. Hope you got room for another pair of boots, then. I owe Celestia my life. That, and I'd never be able to look my sister in the eye if anything happened to her. I promise to do my share and more to help those in need. I'll remain ever faithful to you, Elaine. Till death do us part.
was told you were asking for me, Helene. I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. It's beautiful. Almost like something out of a fairy tale. It may as well be. This ring has been in the royal family for generations. And you believe me worthy of such an honor? I do. Both as a warrior maiden, spurred onward by her bounteous sense of justice. And as a gentle princess, <laughs> able to tread this path ever at my side. I always dreamed of a day like this, but... I never thought it would actually come. Not for me. I take it you accept, then? Of course. I wouldn't trade your affection for all the riches in the world. And I may not be well-versed in the ways of the court, but I swear, I'll always stand faithful to you, Elaine. Till death do us part. <laughs> Those words came as quite a shock the first time, but now, they're the finest poem I've ever heard. Truly is a marvelous ring. I'll have to make sure my griffin doesn't mistake it for a snack instead. Um, yes, please do that. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Be careful, Elaine! He's not beaten yet! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. We'll never fall to you! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! Her breathing is steady, Elaine. She's alive! Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The is complete. 
complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. I'm not going anywhere until the final blow is struck. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Come, Elaine. Let's bring their prolonged suffering to an end. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
strange. I would think there'd be a market here. We've got so many mouths to feed these days, keeping our rations stocked has been almost impossible. I hope there's at least someone who'll sell me some food. A shame. I thought you dreamt of becoming a gallant knight, just like your mother before you. Enough. You and I both know they'd never take a half-elf. No one chooses their birth, Ridiel. Your blood may not be pure, but you can't let that stop you from achieving greatness. What's going on over there? If you ask me, the only thing knighthood brought my mother was an early death by Zenoiran Steel. Now please, never speak of this again. Sorry to interrupt, but could I ask you something? You're not from around here. Well, um, no. I'm on a sightseeing tour of Fevrith, traveling to new lands with every passing day. In a full suit of armor. Right. The world's a dangerous place lately. Anyway, is there a market near here? I'm running low on rations for the road. Just keep walking. You can't miss it. Thank you, ma'am. My son says she's the one selling us out to Zenora, the Alpana. One day, his friends were grumbling in a tavern. The next, they were tossed in a jail cell for sedition. Now, now, you can't go trusting every barb thrown at her just because she was sired by a human. She clearly wasn't who she said she was, so I took it upon myself to follow her. And sure enough, she had a whole battalion backing her up. The rebel army, no doubt. The emblem you describe matches theirs to the last detail. Quite a valuable bit of info, if you ask me. More valuable than the crumbs you've offered. Greedy little half-blood. You've already got your pay. I swear. You'd sell your pride if you thought it'd fetch you a few coins. Some way to thank me. If that's how he feels, maybe I will. Those rebels would probably pay me plenty for a little intel on their enemy. I'd never track you down. Uh, you're the one who pointed me to the market. Name's Ridiel. You're with the Rebels, right? Easy there. I've got some information you might want to hear. You interested? That depends on the details. Lay a hand on that harbor and you'll get your fingers burnt. Zenoira knows you're coming. I'll gladly tell you more. For a price. Their numbers, where they're posted, you name it. Is that why you followed me earlier? I'm sure the only reason they know of our plans is because you offered them the same deal. Hm. Get lost if you're not buying. I overheard your conversation in town. About how you gave up on your dream of knighthood. But you can still change your mind. Fight back against Zenoira instead of striking underhanded deals with them. That's not possible. Not for me. And I have my mother and her taste for human men to thank for it. What about you? Do you really think you can challenge Zenoira? Because I can tell you what you'll win. A vain demise. And nothing more. You're wrong. We can change this world. Free Fevrith and all her people. And even if I die to make it happen, my life will have had meaning. Because someone, someday, will see our task through to the end. What's any of that matter if you're not there to witness it? It'll be a hollow end to a truly wasted life. The same as my mother before you. 
Can't say I didn't warn them. That rebel girl's as good as dead. Unless I bailed her out, that is. But why should I? Nothing good can come from making an enemy of Zenoira. You're wrong. We can change this world. Free Fevrith and all her people. And even if I die to make it happen, my life will have had meaning. Because someone, someday, will see our task through to the end. <laughs> it sounded just like what Mom used to say. Even if I fall, someone someday will win this fight. It'll never be over as long as we keep pushing forward. Yeah, Mom's battle isn't over. I might not have a chance as a knight, but maybe, just maybe, I can still defend her pride. The area is secure, and all clerics of the Orthodoxy accounted for. Welcome news indeed. I've brought her, Your Majesty. Ridiel, was it? Few in this world would risk their lives for a handful of hostages. Your bravery will not go unrewarded. Please, uh, it was nothing. Elaine, sir. She's asked if we'd accept her into the Liberation. A compelling offer. I can attest to her dedication myself. Hold a moment, Your Highness. Should the people of this town be believed, Ridiel here has served as an informant for Zenoira. <laughs> it would be ill-advised to let such a merchant of words walk among us. The rumors are true. I sold them intelligence once. But not anymore. My heart's set on one thing now and that alone. Bringing them to justice. And why is that? So I can finally put an end to the fight my mom died for. I won't let her life, or her death, be for nothing. With all due respect, I'm not convinced. Perhaps a spell in the local jail will give us the time to learn her true intentions. <sighs> Sir Joseph, wait! I will gladly welcome her to our ranks. Your Highness, she doesn't seem the sort to betray her mother's memory. That, and she's already come to our aid in battle once. I doubt Zenoira would welcome her back after that. If you are that certain, I will not object. His Highness may place his confidence in you, Ridiel. But know that I will ever be watching for even the slightest sign of deceit. My actions will prove the truth of my words. Those actions must be impressive indeed if you have Chloe so eager to recruit you. They are, Your Majesty. Then I'll trust you to make her feel at home. Not a problem. Come on, Ridiel. I'll show you around. This way. Hurry. Hey, stop pulling.
I hear you have something to tell me, Prince? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. This isn't something to be joking about. And at a time like this, no less. It's no joke. I wish for you to accept this ring from the deepest depths of my heart. But that means you... we... really? Is it truly such a startling suggestion? I believe I've made my feelings quite clear. I guess I have picked up on it, but still... Who goes thrusting a ring at someone out of nowhere? The shot could have killed me! You're right. I should never have surprised you like this. It's funny. All my life I cursed my mother for settling down with a human. Swore that I'd never follow the same path, not in a thousand years. But you've changed my mind. I'll wear that ring with pride. I couldn't ask for anything more. Thank you, Ridiel. I guess that makes it official then. Hope you're ready to spoil me. Now and for the rest of our years. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> If you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! I don't understand. Where is he getting all this power? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh. Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know of defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Do your worst. We'll fight you until the bitter end and far beyond. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! I can feel her heart beating from here. She's all right, Elaine. Speak to me, please. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The season is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true. <laughs> Rise.
these prisoners of the Unicorn's curse. Spectral phantoms from an ancient time. You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength. Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Right. It's time to give this wretched creature the oblivion he deserves. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febreth beneath its heel, perhaps? Say whatever you want, Baltro. We won't hear another word of it. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The seat of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come, Ali. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. And bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! I'm ready when you are.
The barrier is complete, Teras. Are you certain about this, my lady? The crystals show that Ter Rosalinda walks with the enemy. Rosalinda, you say? Finally, an opportunity to be rid of her for good. Cut her down with the rest of those vermin. I wasn't asking you. What do you suggest, Teras? I have no cause to disagree. Any who aid the rebels must pay with their lives. My sister is no exception to that. Slay her, if you must. As you command. Need I remind you who reigns over this land, Lord Gailey? You are to advise on military strategy, nothing more. I understand, my lady. Then prove it. Damned witch. My house was the most decorated in all of Cornea, and she has the gall to treat me like a common peasant. The barrier has fallen. What? I see your useless soldiers are ever eager to drag my reputation through the muck. This is no time to be casting stones, Lord Gailey. You've sat idle in safety while the battle has raged outside. Deal with them yourself, if it's such a blow to your esteem. You dare think me a man of empty words? Very well then. I'll show just how sharp my spear can sting. But I'd like a demonstration of the wise and great seer's might in return. So be it. I don't share your aversion to combat. <laughs> Good. Is she restored? I believe so, yes. I'm sorry, Eltalinda. I never wanted to hurt you. So, Baltro's spell can be broken, hmm? Who goes there? Show yourself! I'm right here, boy. What is the meaning of this? Master! Yana, it's been years. On your guard, Elaine. I learned everything I know from this woman. The sorceress Alcina. The very person who helped Zenoira conquer our lands. So it was you? <laughs> oh, poor little Elaine. You've come to resemble him so dearly. It's you in there, isn't it? The real you. Not one of Zenoira's puppets. Which means it was you controlling Eldalinda. <laughs> you misunderstand, child. Our magic does not simply make marionettes of its victims. Then what does it do? My sister would never have conspired with Zenoira by her own free will. And why should I answer that, exactly? We'll make you answer. <laughs> Sheltering myself in the girl's body took more than its fair share of magic. It seems this is where I make my exit. Farewell, for now. But don't worry, Elaine. We'll meet again soon enough. You have my utmost gratitude, Prince. And my humble apologies as well. I have to thank you too, Elaine. I'd never have seen Eltalinda again if not for your help. I'm just happy to see you both reunited. As for that apology, you needn't blame yourself for what happened. Alcina's magics made you an unwilling captive. There lies no fault in that. Your kindness knows no bounds. And it heartens me to see you safe and sound, Yonisa. I owe my health to Elaine here just as much as you do. All because of a revelation he had that told him to come find you. Me? Indeed. At the urging of a self-named Great Sage within a sanctuary in Cornea. 
He claimed that in order to defeat Galerius, I must meet with the Turdenos of Elheim and unbind the Ring of the Unicorn. If you know anything about how such a feat may be accomplished, I beg you, tell me. I understand now what you're after. But I fear I lack the knowledge you seek. Though I have laid eyes on some old texts that spoke of your ring. And where can I find such texts? In the Nasthirion, the Tower of Thorns in your language. It houses an archive only I may enter, within which lie histories that predate the founding of our nation, as well as records of arcane rituals and magics. I can recall a treatise regarding the unicorn being mentioned in one such record. The spire stands to the west of this castle, and is a site most sacred to dark elves like me. But unfortunately, it now rests in Zenoiran hands. Then we make for it at once, and reclaim it for the good of Elheim. Provided we're able to do so, would you be willing to grant me access to those texts you mentioned? But of course, Prince. I will aid you however I'm able. Apologies for the interruption, but the sun has nearly made its nest over the horizon. I bid you stay the night. I'll ready your beds. Much appreciated. We'll do just that. Those damned rebels have ruined everything! And unfortunately, the witch is far too cunning to let them slit her throat so easily. If she tells Galerius of what's happened, we'll find ourselves in even hotter water. I don't mean to challenge you, Lord Gailey, but what are you hoping to accomplish by staying here? Uh, simple-minded fool. We are the last survivors of an army defeated. Say we ran home to Zenora with our tails tucked tightly between our legs. What do you think would become of us? <laughs> what are you implying, sir? We'd be executed. No, I don't want to die. I have a family back home. Uh, enough of your blubbering. Even if we wanted to escape Elheim, we would have no way of making it through that cursed winding wood. No. What we need to do now is secure a new route in instead. The witch may not have found it a tasteful method, but the way to shatter their spell is simple enough. Controllable. Such foul disrespect for nature. If Ervelda is lost, the Fae... No, this very land will perish with it. Then we must see this inferno extinguished. We should hurry. By the mercy of the stars, Ervelda is safe once again. And we have you to thank for it, Prince. I'm only glad it didn't meet any serious harm. But I have to wonder, why did Gailey wish to burn it down? Our divine tree has grown for millennia, steadily accumulating an immense amount of magical energy. That energy, the vital essence of life itself, is bestowed through its boughs to all beings small and large throughout this land. Beings such as the Fae, who use its power to protect our home from the impurities of the outside world. They're the ones responsible for the Winding Wood. Come to see the tree, Yana. I wanted to pay my respects, yes. It's not often you get to gaze upon the Divine. But as I was saying, the Winding Wood plays host to an almost immeasurable swarm of fairies. They live in its greenery, rustling its branches and leaves, and in so doing, numbing the senses of any who try to pass. They've set armies astray, and debilitated others who wished harm on Elheim. In a way, they're nature's own self-defense system. But were we to lose Ervelda, we would lose the Fae along with it. The monster. 
such wanton destruction, all to clear the path for Zenoira's advance. I suspect it was Alcina who kept the man from his maniacal schemes until now. After all, she too would be left devoid of the phase power if the tree had burned. <sighs> Either way, I'm glad it remains as lush as ever. And we have you and your army to thank for that. I truly couldn't be more grateful. Oh. I see you've made quick work of your beloved brethren. Have you no heart? No shame for the atrocities you commit? Prepare to face judgment for your ghastly crimes. <clears throat> what? This has all been quite lovely, but I fear I have no more time for futile games. Now, I shall finally rid myself of that irksome ring and the girl both. I can't let you do that. How dare you! These two may be mere obstructions on your path of conquest, but I've need of them both, and none of you. Seems the ghoul slipped away. Why have you helped us? Because that girl is the only vessel I have, and I've no interest in seeing it defiled. What do you mean, vessel? Simple. Zenoira's spell is not the mind control you think it is. No, it is a channeling magic, designed to place a fallen soul into the body of one who yet lives. You mean to say all those we thought were puppets were actually possessed by spirits of the dead? Which implies you're one of them yourself! Mind your manners, child. Living souls are just as easily transferred as the deceased, and mine is very much still alive. For the moment, perhaps. We'll just have to see about that, won't we? Now, I know you seek the ancient texts housed within the Tower of Thorns. Meet me at its peak, and we can finally bring this long-winded chapter to a close. We've scoured the city, Taras. All of her people are safe. It would seem even the great Zenoiran army found themselves entangled in these labyrinthian tunnels. Thank you both. It puts my heart at ease knowing our home is unharmed. It's funny. In this moment, I'm reminded of the day you two first swore the oath as my personal guard. Rylanor, as much as I'd like to claim the honor for myself, you were the first to see Ethelion's potential for excellence. Even amidst a golden generation such as ours, his star shone brighter than any other. It was obvious he would serve you well. With a bit of training, of course. Yes. I remember when you first introduced him to me. The poor child was too nervous to even speak a word. <laughs> that was years ago, I'll have you note. <laughs> and now you stand a proud and mighty warrior. Rylanor's eye is keener than I give her credit for. But enough of the past. The Nasthidion awaits, and at its apex, Alcina. She is a sorceress mighty enough to see past the trickery of the Fey and slip into Elheim under her own power. You are not to drop your guards at any moment. Yes, yes my, my lady. lady. We'll begin the preparations at once. Come, Ethelion. I've never seen such an incredible city before. The Dark Elves call this place home, you say? It is also the seat of my Eunice's power. Let it serve as the headquarters for this campaign as well. I thank you. But... Do you harbor no reservations about letting foreigners walk its halls? Humans at that? The Liberation has been most generous with its aid. 
and we'll be needing more still in the battle to come. But it's nearly upon us. Today, we defeat that wretched Alcina and reclaim the Nastidion in Elheim's name. Your treachery ends here, Alcina. Tell me, Master. Why have you aligned yourself with Zenoira? I doubt you'll believe what I have to say. I used to wield my magics for Cornea, same as you. And in her time of need, I rushed to Elenia's aid. I could do no different for His Majesty's daughter. But everything changed when I witnessed the magic they bore. The power to restore the dead. You see, all that I did was for King Gerard. <laughs> Leave our pursuers to me, my leash. As long as you live on, that is enough. Nonsense. I refuse to flee if it means renouncing you in the process. Watch out! Ah! Gerard! Pay for that! <laughs> No! Poison! Such dire tragedy, leaving his young Elenia alone in this world. I never expected the Sacred Blade of Cornea to fall so pitifully. The Prior King and his wife are furious from what I've heard. That witch always was His Majesty's favorite. It's the only reason she kept her job. But there are countless others ready to rise from academies and take her place. I doubt she'll have a single friend in this world ere long. And so, I intended to use Zenoira's magic to impart his soul into Elaine's body. I even kept Galerius far from Palavian shores in order to see His Majesty's vessel live on. All of it. For him. You can't really believe he'd be happy, being revived under such circumstances. No, it was a fool's errand, as you say. But I would bear even the harshest reprimand, if it meant hearing his voice just one more time speak with him again, even for a moment. Rest well, Master. Prince Elaine, I must thank you, on behalf of the entire elven race. Had you and your company not come to these lands, we would surely be languishing beneath Zenoira's iron fist even now. The war we fight is not for Cornea alone. And victory is but a distant dream until all who suffer under Zenoira's tyranny rise in song as one. Yet even were that not the case, we would come to your defense every time. Elaine. Ah, yes. Have you found any texts bearing mention of the Ring of the Unicorn? We have. However... Allow me. The room that housed them was ransacked, set ablaze by the look of it. The ancient tomes were badly burned. <sighs> but be at ease. The passages we need were still legible. The Ring of the Unicorn will be restored to its true strength only once the Rite of Covenant has been performed. And is this rite described anywhere? It is. According to the texts, all you have to do is go to the altar and offer up the Ring of the Maiden to a chosen companion. Not sure that's a ring we've got. Indeed. It is a treasure passed down through generations by the Turinos of Elheim. And now, I'd like you to have it. Are you certain you wish to part with such a precious artifact? Beyond certain. This ring is the only chance we have of stopping Galerius. 
It wouldn't do to keep that to ourselves, now would it? Huh. Guess that's everything. All we gotta do now is head to that altar and have ourselves a ritual. Yes, but its location is sadly lost to us. Trapped behind burnt words and cindered pages. <sighs> of course it is. Should have known it wouldn't be easy. Not like we've got a choice, though. Come on, Elaine. Let's get to hunting. Hold just a moment. We wish to accompany you and join the battle for a free Thevrith. In truth, we owe you an immeasurable debt after everything you've done for our people. And while this can't truly be considered fair repayment, I ask that you let us aid you as best we can. Elheim will never be safe, as long as Zenoira exists. We know that all too well now. Ten years ago, we turned a blind eye to their designs in order to preserve our peace. And that very peace was the price we paid. We won't make that mistake again. Not this time. With resolve that strong, we would be mad to refuse. You're always welcome amongst our ranks. Glad to make it official. Now come on, we've got places to be.
I hear you have need of me, Prince? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Allow me to ask you something before I offer my response. Elves and humans bear the same flesh, bleed the same blood, yet the limits of our mortality differ greatly. I will live on long after your spirit has returned to the Earth. My grief is all but inevitable if we continue down this path. What do you make of that? I'm well aware that agreeing to this will subject you to years of solitude and sorrow. But I share in that sentiment myself. The mere thought of leaving this world without you at my side fills me with the coldest melancholy and fear. Even still, I wish to spend what little time I have with none but you. I know it to be selfish of me, naive even. And yet, I ask that you forgive me this request all the same. Thank you, Elaine. I can tell you truly mean what you've said. And you're right. Grief visits upon more than just the one left behind. I accept your proposal. And your melancholy, your fear, as well as your selfishness. Let us swear our union by the might of these sacred rings. We shall remain as one until the day death himself tears us apart. There could be no greater honor. As long as we have time to share in this life, I promise to share it with you. And I the same. I love you, Eltalinda. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Tenacity knows no bounds. My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know. Defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Say what you will. These twisted dreams of yours shall end by our hand! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Hmm. Is that... you, Mother? Your Majesty... but how? Mother! <laughs> she still lives, Elaine!
speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Today, we restore peace to all of Thevereth. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the creek to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Have you no heart? No compassion for those you once called brothers and sisters? Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this one you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! All of my 
research, lost to the endless emptiness of time. Eleanor, I'm glad to see you alive and well. Hmm? Well, well, Teras. And who's that behind you there? This is Elaine, from Cornea's Liberation Army. I only stand here now thanks to their aid. <laughs> what a wonderful stroke of luck. <gasps> What's gotten into you? These verdant streets are a web you've walked straight into, and I, the spider at its heart. We have to get out of here, now. To me, men! This day is the last we'll ever suffer these flies and their ceaseless buzzing. Let not a one leave alive. Forgive me for what I've done. I've allowed myself to be bridled like a horse on a cart, and placed my countrymen in grave danger. But more than that, I swung my blade at the very woman I swore my life to protect. Stand, Rylanor. You've groveled long enough. There's no such thing. How else am I to atone for this failure? You have done nothing which demands atonement. It was only due to your devout loyalty that Zenora saw reason to control you. And consider what future might have befallen us had you not helped me flee to the Winding Wood. For one, I would never have enlisted the aid of the Liberation. Nor would we have rescued my beloved Venisa from Zenora's foul clutches. If anything, I should have come to your side sooner. I hope you can forgive me that misstep. How could you say such things? And yet, your kindness only makes my flame for you burn brighter. I pledge my life to you anew, should you only accept it.
You summoned me, Elaine? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. <sighs> Surely you haven't thought the matter through if you're asking this of me. I have. I could imagine none other serving the role, Rylanor. I hope I haven't offended. Not in the slightest. You're an exceptional man, Elaine. Possessed of a strong heart and a sharp mind. And above all, a kindness few could match. In truth, my feelings for you have grown unabated since the day you so warmly tended to my leg. And to hear those words cross my ears has brought me a greater joy than I ever thought possible. Then allow me to further bolster that joy. Our time together has been brief, perhaps, yet I've observed the grace with which you conduct yourself. The selflessness. I have to admit, such qualities have seen you occupy a genuinely cherished place in my heart. Elaine, I... Would you do me this honor? Yes. A hundred times, yes. I will treasure this ring for as long as I live. Today, I'm the happiest woman in all of Febreth. And I the happiest man. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How does he still stand, let alone fight? Though his desperation is writ plain on his face. My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. A bold claim, Galerius, but one you'll never fulfill! think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! Be calm, Elaine. Her breathing is firm and steady. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day. But you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. 
It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. Gate to the beyond stands open and true. <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse, spectro phantoms from an ancient time. You shall be the first to perish by my new found strength. Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. A feat only possible once Baltra lies slain by our hand. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Fevrith beneath its heel, perhaps? You'll come to regret those words, Churl. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
You make a habit of watching people from the bushes? <gasps> and is that El Talindo over there? Come on, if you want to talk to her that bad, you just gotta walk up and do it. Quiet, please! Were you not hoping to speak with her? Who are you? And why are you spying like this? I can't discuss this here. Come with me. My name is Galadmir. Former bodyguard to the Turanas herself. Former, huh? When Zenoira first invaded our home, I fell victim to a grievous lapse in judgment. Not only were all the men in my command slain, but in my desperation to live, I divulged Ter El Tolinda's whereabouts. I have lived in hiding ever since that horrible day. Yeah, even I'd find it tough showing my face after that. But then, why are you turning up now? My ears have met with the news of the Liberation Army's reclamation of Castle Lowerhall. And so, I've decided to devote my life once more as a loyal beau of Elheim. But first, I must prove myself worthy of the honor. Allow me to fight by your side, fair knights. I only ask that you don't speak a word of this to the Turunas in return. Why not tell her the truth, as you've done with us here? And to offer my apology with nothing to show for it? Would you do the same were you in my place? Doubt it. What have we got to lose? The girl's clearly done a lot of thinking about this. Let's help her set things right. Thank you, Lex. Huh? I knew you'd understand. Uh, why do you know my name? Because I've watched you from the shadows, of course. <sighs> Unsettling declarations aside, if you truly wish to stand amongst our ranks, I expect you'll make yourself useful. My honor may be lost, but my aim remains truer than the light of dawn. I swear it. We've someone here who'd like to see you. Oh? And who might that be? <gasps> it's a shock, I know. What is the meaning of this, Galadmir? <clears throat> I understand the displeasure, but please, I ask that you hear what she has to say. Do you have any idea how worried you've made me? Thank the Fae you're safe! Thank them for me as well. I'm relieved to see you as radiant as ever. Forgive my absence, Teras. Hold a moment. This doesn't seem like the return of a soldier disgraced. It was all a lie, then. Not entirely. It's true that I formerly served as bodyguard to the Turanas. But all that stuff about honor and betrayal... A fabrication, yes. Galadmir would never abandon me in such a manner. Though the mournful fact remains. I failed to protect her. I was away on duty when Zenoira struck at Lowerhall. Unable to break their defenses, I had to resign myself to watching over the castle from afar. But why deceive us? The majority of Zenoira's forces comprise of nobles, townspeople, and various others originally of Cornea. The same is true of those who march for your liberation. I needed to know whether I could truly trust you, and felt the flames of battle to be the best method of tempering that trust. It was the only way to be certain. Forgive Galadmir her subterfuge. She's normally an elf of great intentions, I assure you. Though perhaps a tad too cautious at times. After all that fuss about keeping you a secret, too. <laughs> Still, if it's won us your confidence, the trial was more than worth it.
You've picked an interesting setting for a discussion. I presume it's an important matter? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. The truth is, I trust you above all others. Not only for your strength, but for your loyalty, your cautious demeanor, everything about you, really. Hence, you'd have me wear your ring. That is the request I'd make of you, yes. Though, perhaps I failed to earn the trust required for such an oath. <laughs> if anything, I'd say your subdued confidence betrays your lack of faith in me. That was not my intent. <laughs> Apologies for teasing you, Elaine. You still have much to learn about me. But I'll gladly give you all the time you need. I accept. Are you certain? I've watched you hold the entire liberation together with your bare hands. And sacrifice your own well-being for that of your people. How could I not be certain about such an incredible man? Now the ring, if you will. <sighs> I should have known you'd have me beaten in a war of words. This covenant is a profound one, Elaine. So don't think you can go dying on me before your task is finished. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> If you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! I should have known he wouldn't surrender so easily! Keep your distance, Elaine! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh! Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. They mock us to our very faces. But I promise it won't be that simple. What? Do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! <laughs> She's all right. Just a bit shaken up, I imagine. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine. I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. 
If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open in true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long-drawn war. Here and now. Defeat the man, and shatter his cursed sigil. And this all will finally be over. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless ideal, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing over the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> What's more? There would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Enough of your deranged ramblings! Finish it, Elaine! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city's very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come, Buddy. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. Bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! I've been waiting for you to say that! On your signal!
What's up, Prince? Got something you want to tell me? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Look, I know this thing's about trust and all, but I'm not exactly the Maiden kind of girl. You sure? I am. There's none other I would ask this of. You've got some weird tastes. But hey, I'm not judging. Is it truly such an odd request? You're pure of heart, Ketra. True to yourself, and strong besides. Which doesn't even account for your compassion, your kindness, your diligence, your dedication. <laughs> With a partner as marvelous as you by my side, the ring's power will surely never falter. <laughs> Kitra? Did I say something wrong? Of course you did. You're being way too nice to me. Ugh. I don't even know how I'm supposed to respond to that. <laughs> don't laugh! Sorry, sorry. Still, I guess I can't really say no after all that, huh? Fine then. I'll do it. Thank you, Kitra. I'd have it no other way. Done and done. Zenoira won't even know what hit him. <laughs> and there's that strength again. I'm honored to be able to call it mine. <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How is he still going after everything we've hit him with? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Give it up already! You can't win, and you know it! What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! It's okay, Prince. She's breathing just fine. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, 
I can't say how much time has passed since that day. But you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. I'm ready when you are. That sigil won't stand a chance against us. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febrith beneath its heel, perhaps? Can we just finish him off already? This guy makes me sick. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Leaving me! You ruined everything! A cursed fool! These souls are not a power one can wield, Baltro. They are human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The seat of very nature has been recast! How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come, Rame. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn and bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! We've got this, Elaine!
where is your rider, Fair Griffin? I'm sorry, Your Highness. Please, you needn't apologize. But is there a reason you're hiding from me? Well, I guess I'm having trouble believing any of this is real. It is real, isn't it? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. <laughs> you... you would? Indeed. There's none more deserving of it than you. Oh, what do I do? Can this really be happening? Um, Fran. Forgive me, my prince. I'm just struggling to take this all in. The blame lies with me for surprising you so. The truth is, I've been enchanted ever since we took to the sky together. Not by the thrill of riding atop a griffin, but by how I felt doing so with you. Should you accept this ring, we shall fly together for the rest of our lives, and attempt to surmount our fates in the process. Yet I will bear no fear as long as we walk hand in hand. So tell me, Fran, would you be willing to make another dream of mine a reality? <laughs> to be honest, when I first heard this talk of rings and rights, I secretly hoped I would be the one you ended up picking. All that to say, I would be honored. I'm glad to hear it. Looks like both our dreams came true today. Indeed. Perhaps I could have saved us some worry if I only mentioned it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius! You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How does he still have the strength to stand? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never end defeat. Your majesty, Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. No. Fevrith will suffer your cruelty no longer. What? Do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Mm -hmm. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! <sighs> oh, thank the Father. She's still breathing. Speak to me, please.
I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. The sigil will fall by our hands! Come home, both of you. On the souls of Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond, and now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? Enough! Behind the guise of magic and sorcery, you're nothing but a heartless coward. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed. If you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Research. 
lost to the endless emptiness of time. <laughs> Not another step. How dare you show your faces here after what you've done? Wait, please. I'm not sure what ill has befallen you, but I can assure you it wasn't our doing. That's a bald-faced lie and you know it. I'll ask one more time. Where have you taken my men? Answer me if you don't want to be executed hey, where you stand! Slow down, lady. Dinah, wait! Unifi! What are you doing colluding with Zenoira? I'm not. These people are with the Liberation Army from Cornea. What? <sighs> Sorry. Hard to tell who's who these days. I gather from your question that Zenoira has taken your men captive. Yep. They've been rounding us bestrals up like we were mindless cattle. Dire news, Captain! The Zenoiran army has struck at Vastagora! What? And our brethren? Dispersed, ma'am. Those of them that made it out, at least. Damn it! I don't have time to deal with outsiders. If you're really not fighting for them, then leave. Now. Stand, you damned animal! Get walking! Here already? Bastards! The coward won't even stick around to face us. As fierce as you are, Rui, you're no different from a domesticated little lapdog tied up like this. Dinah, I knew you'd come for me. Are you the only one they got their hands on? Where are the others? Not sure. Zenoira's hunting us down like it's their damn jobs. I don't like the sound of that. Are they planning on showing us off in some foul circus? I'd tell you if I could. By the way, Dinah, who's that behind you? Hmm? Oh. A southerner. Claims he's got a bone to pick with Zenoira. <laughs> Never thought I'd see you trusting an outsider. Who said anything Don't... about trust? This is strictly business. Anyway, the others are in town then? If they're still alive. <sighs> We've managed to take the town back. But more than half our squadron was hauled off to God's nowhere. Zenoiran scum. So, Dinah, what'll you do now? Rescue our men. What else? Yeah? You'd be out of your mind to go after them on your own. And besides, who's gonna keep watch here if you go running off? You make a good point. Fine then. See that this town stays safe, Rui. Me? But... How's it looking? A little brighter now. I'd like to lend my spear to your cause, assuming you'll take it. <clears throat> Whoa, really? As much as it hurts to admit it, 
I could never pose a threat to Zenoira on my own. And I can't say I give a damn about your human conflicts. But I'll do whatever it takes to get my men home safe. You intend to use us, then? Not what I'd have called it, but yeah. <laughs> That's more honesty than I'm used to hearing. Very well, then. We accept. I won't let you down. Need something? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Elaine, I know how deeply you care for those who fight for you. Better than most, I'd say. But I thought that sentiment applied to all of us equally. And it does, to an extent. Every last one of my soldiers is important to me. But I realized something when I saw you in danger. Among all others, you are the one I hold most dear. What am I supposed to say to that? Knowing you, you mean every word of it. Not to mention the way you act around me. 
It's just not fair. I showed up planning to turn you down, you know. I'm sorry. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. What business do you have apologizing? <sighs> Fine. I'll stand by you. To the very end. Thank you, Dinah. For saying yes, despite yourself. One more thing. Remember what I said before? How I don't want to see you hurt? It's even more true now. So no dying on me, okay? I want you to promise. I promise. I'll never let you experience that pain again. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius. You saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! How is he still fighting? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Try it then. Your cruel little games are finished. think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Mm -hmm. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! Her breathing's steady, Elaine. She's gonna be just fine. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The decision is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, 
see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. That sigil doesn't stand a chance against us. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? Heartless demon, we won't let you do this! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this one you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The sigil's very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come, Malay. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. Bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! Right behind you!
There's someone over there. Poor woman. It would seem she was cut down from behind. Uh, how can this be? Oh, Rainis. You know her. She was once my lady in waiting, yes. Stand back. I think I can heal her wounds. Lady Scarlet, I thank the Father above for your safety. You've grown much since last we met. Before me stands not the child I remember, but a full-blooded soldier of the Liberation. This isn't exactly how I imagined our reunion, but I'm glad you're all right, Rhaenys. And still as stunning as ever, I see. What have you been doing these days? Fighting back. I string my bow for a small resistance movement backed by almost every last of Albion's lords. The nobility has not bent the knee to Zenoira? They maintain deference outwardly, all while funding our revolt from behind the curtain of anonymity. As a result, the territories that fall outside the Church's purview are locked in fierce civil war. And how did you come to be knocked out on the ground here? I was sent as a messenger to request aid for the Resistance. But I was soon discovered by a band of Zenorans who turned their blades upon me and struck. My wounds ran deep, yet I was able to escape until... Well, you know what happened next. Rhaenys, was it? Zenoira is our enemy as much as they are yours. We will purge them from this holy land and see Albion restored. As I should have expected, word of your noble actions has long reached our ears, Prince Elaine. Allow me to lend my aptitude to the effort. It's barely been ten minutes since you were rapping on the Father's door, begging him to welcome you. You need rest, and you're not fighting anyone until you get it. Of course, Lady Scarlet. How fair your wounds? Entirely healed, thanks to your magic. And what of your allies? Still sheltered in the Abbey to the south? Uh, how did you... We heard from one of the Zenoirans we took captive. It seems they've dispatched a squadron to the Abbey's location. We have to hurry. Indeed. And this time, my arrows shall support your march. Let us be off. up ahead, yes? It is. They've offered far beyond their means in treatment and lodging for our wounded soldiers. And now it's only a matter of time before Zenoira's squadron arrives. Then we'll just have to prepare the warmest of welcomes for them. A word, Lady Scarlet? My people are safe once more, due almost wholly to the benevolence of the Liberation Army. The proper thanks eludes me. Um, Rhaenys? In what felt like a mere moment, you've become a fine young woman. Do you remember the day I left Albion? Back then, I didn't understand the point of it all. I cried and cried, begging to stay until my voice went hoarse. And I remember you cried with me that day. I've spent many an idle evening since. Lamenting my decision to remain behind. With only my thoughts to keep me company, I could but imagine how frightened you must have been. How alone. I was both, at times. But my years on the island made me tougher than I could have ever expected. Indeed they did. The woman before me now is nothing like the sobbing girl I remember. <laughs> You miss some of my finest hours, I'll have you know. Yes, I'm painfully aware. But I refuse to miss another. My place is at your side, and nowhere else. I only hope Prince Elaine sees it the same way. I suppose I'll know soon enough when I ask to join the Liberation in true. Don't they need you here? Perhaps, but we're all of the same mind. We do whatever is necessary to aid the Liberation. Then come. I'm sure Elaine will be thrilled to hear the news.
pleasure to see you, my prince. I was told you've need of me. I'd like you to have the ring of the maiden. Me, sir? But why? I've seen firsthand the kindness and strength with which you rise in defense of those you love, even when gravely injured yourself. And I could hope for no greater qualities from the one who will bear this ring, and soon serve as my queen. Such tender words. When I first arrived at this altar, I thought it some manner of mistake, that I could never fulfill a role so grand. Yet I admit, hearing the contents of your heart spoken plain has swept those doubts far off into the ether. You and I shall change this world, my prince, into a place where none need ever suffer again. We shall not know rest until it is so. To be with you is everything I could have ever dreamed of. Thank you, Rhaenys. Tis done. Should the cold clutches of doubt ever take hold of me again, I shall grasp this ring and remember the heavenly moment we shared here. And, of course, the striking proposal you've graced me with. I love you, Elaine. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, You'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past. I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! The man refuses to accept his demise! My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh! Left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years! Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form! While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their Emperor shall never know defeat! Your Majesty! Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. You think us powerless to oppose you? What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! By the Father's mercy, her breathing is shallow, but equally steady. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence.
transition is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. And I shall stand beside you until the final arrow strikes its mark. Come home, both of you. Zenoira, I might is eternal. Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? They shall never do your bidding again, wretched sorcerer. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the departed, if you have any humanity left within you, lend me your aid!
I'd know that voice anywhere. Uh, it's really you! Humorous! I thought my eyes deceived me. It's been so long. A friend of yours? In days past, yes. We were inseparable as children. And you must be Prince Elaine, I presume? You know of him? Everyone has heard stories of the Liberation Army. I take it you stand with them as well, Scarlet? Proud rebel at your service. And I see you've become a knight, just as you always dreamed. It was the only thing I could think about as a child. Those were simpler times. Happier ones. We would play in the garden until the sun went down. Our only company, the resident insects. Right, the garden. I was just talking about it. Is it still there? Indeed, and it's recently welcomed the most beautiful bloom you'll ever see. We could go back if you'd like. Relive our youth for just a moment. That would be wonderful. I'd love to show you too, Elaine. Let's all go together. just as beautiful as I remember it. And such an incredible smell, too. It's stunning, yes. We never had blossoms like these back on Palavia. We used to sit right here, braiding little crowns and necklaces out of different colored flowers. Do you remember, Humorous? You'd press and dry them for us, then... Don't move. Explain yourself. I won't ask twice. Relinquish Scarlet to me, or else. Humorous. Come. It's not safe here. Returned empty-handed, have you? It would seem your heart's just not in this little agreement of ours. A shame. But it is what it is. Consider my promise revoked. Wait, I beg you! It's just as we thought. Scarlet stands with the rebel forces. But if we surround their limited ranks with both our armies, we should have little trouble in reclaiming her. You presume to ask us to partake as well? Please, my lord. This final chance is all I request. <laughs> as you wish. The girl will be ours one way or another. We can settle our agreement once she is. Just know you'll get no further kindness if you fail us now. She won't elude our grasp again. With me, men. We make for our post at once. <laughs> <laughs> Why have you asked to meet me here? I could raise my sword at any moment, you know. I am aware. But I understand why you did it. And I know you have no reason to attack me. Not anymore. It doesn't matter. I'll never deserve your trust again. Tell me, Humorous. Do you remember this? I can't believe you're still holding on to that. Why wouldn't I be? These flowers you pressed bring me straight back to the day I left Albion. You gave them to me as a symbol of our friendship. And asked me never to forget about you. It was all I could do to get you to stop crying. Yes. And it didn't work. Your shoulder was practically drenched with tears. And a bit of snot as well. That was a long time ago. Even still, whenever I felt lonely, I'd look at these flowers, and it was like you were right there next to me. I have been blessed with a great many companions since that day, but I have never once considered getting rid of them. No matter how far apart we may be, you'll always be a dear friend, Humorous. Scarlet, I... <sighs> Come with us. Please. How can you say that after what I've done? 
I tried to betray you, to hand you off to Zenaira. Perhaps, but that's all in the past now. So come. We've shed enough tears in this garden to last us a lifetime. Why? Why have you summoned me here? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. I... don't deserve such an honor. Or did you forget what I've done? How I turned my blade against you? I remember. But I've also observed you in the days since. Seen how tirelessly you've worked to atone for your past transgressions. And I would say you've more than done so. Such single-minded resolve speaks to the profound purity of your heart. In any case, it's not as though you betrayed us out of malice or greed. So please, Humorous, let this bitter dance of self-reproach end here and now. From the moment you accept this ring, your sins will be no more. You shall stand among us as an equal. You're kind, Elaine. Far too kind. But I do like that about you. I accept your offer. I promise to never leave your side from this day forward. Neither in battle, nor in life. And I the same. Never again will you be forced to suffer alone, Humorous. Not while I still live and breathe. Thank you, Elaine. My heart is forever yours.
Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. Earn this. Now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! I don't understand. How is he not beaten? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your Majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. A charming boast, but I promise you'll find it no easy feat. think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? Your majesty. But how? Mother! It's okay, Elaine. She's unharmed. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day. But you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The season is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long-drawn war. Here and now. All the suffering he's caused our lands will finally be repaid. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst I still feast on the souls of Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the keep to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, they would
would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certain. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? A man this warped will never see reason. Come, let's put him out of his misery. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Human lives, human will in its purest form. Impossible! The city's very nature has been recast. How is this happening? It appears we arrived just in time. This isn't how my tale concludes. I won't allow it! The only escape awaiting you, Ultra, is death's cold embrace. Wretched disciples! You dare turn on your master! The time has come for me. Let us lift the curse of the unicorn. Bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls! My chance to atone has come at last! So their true intent was the Bistorius Blue. How enthralling. It would explain why they've suddenly turned their gaze back to Bastaritza. Yeah, they seemed plenty happy to just let us have it once we took it back. Ah, apologies for the delayed introduction. I am Ramona, leader of the Frost Blooms. And I, Elaine, of the Cornian Liberation Army. May I inquire about this Bastorius Bloom you keep mentioning? It is a brilliant jewel, rich ultramarine in color, which has been passed down through the ages in this land. Not only that, but it serves as a symbol of the highest authority, 
thus marking its bearer as the monarch of all Bestral bloodlines. As such, the stone has been in the possession of the Lion Tribe for centuries now. They are akin to your own nation's royal line. Wait, then why do you have it and not Morard? Because I spend my time on the battlefield. Imagine something that important slipping from your pocket in the heat of combat. That's not a risk I'm willing to entertain. Got a point there. <clears throat> Given the current state of the world, it seemed more vital than ever to keep the blue under safe stewardship. And you've taken that responsibility upon yourself. Indeed. Though I wouldn't dare carry it on my person. Where is it, then? Hidden deep amidst the tundra. I'd feared an event such as this may come to pass, and sought a place few could penetrate. But, with how extensively they search, it seems my precaution may not be enough. We should find out for sure. Yes, that may be wise. I know not why these dastards seek the mark of kings. But I suggest we prepare ourselves for any eventuality. Now, the village we seek lies through the ravine to the west. Might I ask you to accompany us? We would be honored. Simply give the word once you've made your preparations. No use. I can scarcely see my hand before my face in this snow. Not even us Bestrals dare traverse this expanse. The land is blighted by blizzards nigh the entire year round. Yet if Zenora's lapdogs were willing to brave it... Then they're looking for the blue. There's no other reason. But Ramona's the only one who knows where it is. Would they really risk their lives in this cold, without even a clue to steer them in the right direction? In any case, an enemy is an enemy, no matter the weather. We prepare for combat at once.
Hello there, Elaine. What is it you wish to discuss with me? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. I anticipated this from the moment I was summoned forth to this altar. Though I can't say I have confidence in the decision. You should. Do you remember what you said to me? How you dreamt of a future where humans and bestrals can live in harmony, free from the bounds of race or nationality. In that moment, I knew. With you at my side, nothing is impossible. Not even the salvation of Fevrith. So please, accept this ring. And together, we shall make both of our dreams into the brightest reality. My word. Even after all my years on this earth, there's truly no telling what surprises life may have in store. And, if I recall correctly, you spoke much the same regarding the future of our two peoples. How you believed they could overcome their differences and march as one to the same beat. Well, you should know that I share your hunger for peace. Not merely for Bastorius, but for the world over. A better life and a better home. I could never spurn the chance to bring such a transformation to pass. I accept. With great pride. I had faith you would. Thank you, Ramona. Let this rite serve as the first step toward a new dawn. For Bestral, Man, Elf, and all life on Fevrith and beyond. We'll make it so, you and I together. And once we do, we can mark the occasion with a hearty bowl of fresh fish stew. My mouth is watering already. Galerius, Emperor of Zenoira. Your ambitions are laid bare, and your empire in ruin. <laughs> if you hope to speak, you'll find me no willing participant. I have no words for you. And this, now. Galerius, you saw in Fevreth's innocent people mere vessels to house your own fallen empire. But as long as I live and breathe, you'll never inflict such callous devastation on our world. How do you know of that? Piteous ghost of an age long past, I shall grant your soul the freedom it desires. You will not! Can there be no restraining him? My brethren were robbed of their corporeal flesh, left to wander in the void of nothingness for 800 years. Their pain is my strength, and my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Zenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know defeat. Your majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. On your guard. There can be no saying what dreadful scheme they may yet plot. think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, your majesty. The last soul the city seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that you, mother? 
Your Majesty. But how? Mother! <laughs> you needn't worry, Elaine. The breath of life still flows through her, and strongly at that. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The gate to the beyond stands open in true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's curse! Spectral phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, your highness? We end this long-drawn war, here and now. Indeed we shall. For every living thing that has suffered under Zenoira's tyranny. Come home, both of you. on the souls of Zenoira, my might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic, most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing fabric beneath its heel, perhaps? You'll do no such thing. This reign of oppression and cruelty ends now. Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Pathetic child. Souls of the Departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Lift the curse of the unicorn, and 
bring the salvation of heaven to these lost souls. We strike in unison. Are you hurt? Don't worry. I just gave him a little shield shove this time. I'm okay. Thank you. Now, before you start running off again, let me say, we're not with Zenoira. We are the Liberation Army, hailing from Cornea in the south. That explains it, then. Sorry for jumping to conclusions there. Uh. But this grassy scent... Oh, I knew you were from Cornea. You can tell where we're from just by smelling us? My name's Unifi. I fight for a free Bastorius with a group called the Frostblooms. Another regional resistance. I should have expected as much. This pendant belongs to you, yes? Uh, I've been looking everywhere for that. It's... Really important to me. I can't believe you found it. Uh, Unifi! Oh, my fur will be whiter than snow if you keep worrying me like this. Holy... Sorry about that, Morard. But what's got you so worked up? Zenoira. The bastard strike at our capital. What? Where's Ramona? Holding the line with the rest of the blooms. But this is no place to talk. We make for the nearest fort.
Well, I'm here. What's this about? I'd like you to have the Ring of the Maiden. Huh? What is it? If you're asking me that, then... Does that mean I get to be with you... forever? It does, if you're willing to accept. I could picture no brighter future, Unifi. Huh. You know, I've never had a real family. Not that I can remember, at least. I mean, I do have Morard and Ramona, and they're the best foster parents I could have ever asked for. But I've been thinking... I want something more. A family I can call my own. And I want it with you, Elaine. So it makes me really happy to know you feel the same. I as well. In truth, I've never been happier. I take it this means you'll accept then? As if you even have to ask. Now that that's all done with, maybe someday we can add to this little family of ours. <laughs> A nice idea. But I fear I only have one pair of rings. That's not what I meant. For 800 years, their pain is my strength. And my body, their fury given form. While the souls of Shenoira remain trapped in the beyond, their emperor shall never know <laughs> defeat. Your Majesty. Baltro! How goes the right? Flawlessly. We lack but a single soul to complete the spell. Then these insects shall be more than enough. Grant me your strength, and we'll stamp them out together. Yeah, yeah. Do us a favor and die already. What do you think you're doing? Apologies if I wasn't clear, Your Majesty. The last soul the sigil seeks is none other than yours. Traitorous fool. Finally gone senile. Is that... you, Mother? Your Majesty. But how? Mother! She's okay. Speak to me, please. I never imagined he possessed such frightful mastery over the bodies of others. Elaine, I can't say how much time has passed since that day, but you've grown so much. If only I could have been there to witness it. It seems I owe Joseph a great deal for raising you in my absence. The season is complete, and the gate to the beyond stands open and true! <laughs> Rise, prisoners of the Unicorn's Curse! Spectro phantoms from an ancient time! You shall be the first to perish by my newfound strength! Joseph, see my mother somewhere safe. And you, Your Highness? We end this long-drawn war. Here and now. Let's finish him off for good, Elaine. Come home, both of you. <laughs> Whilst 
I still feast on the souls of Zenoira. My might is eternal! Do you not seek their resurrection? <laughs> A witless idea, born of the fool Galerius. He served his purpose well enough in prizing open the gate to the beyond. And now, he shall be consumed like all the rest. <laughs> What's more, there would be little benefit in reviving mere humans. Do the souls of your brethren mean nothing to you? That's fuel for my magic. Most certainly. What primitive evil should I reanimate next, I wonder? A monster capable of crushing Febris beneath its heel, perhaps? No. You'll never hurt anyone again! Spirits of Zenoira, hear my call. Your Emperor is no more, and in his place, a tyrannical fiend who craves nothing but absolute control. Tell me, is this what you truly desire? To sacrifice your very essence in service of this demon? Perfetic child. Souls of the departed, if you've any humanity left within you, lend me your aid! Of time. 